I confirm that we are now live on YouTube, so we can proceed. Okay. Good morning. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic, electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. This morning, Committee of Adjustment is running a test pilot, a pilot test during this session of our hearing to offer attendees the option to appear by video. Those attendees that have registered in advance to attend by video will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submissions deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist rule if you fail to respect this instruction. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 has amended this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaws that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and the Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, or in some instances, limited circumstances, to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure will be as follows. I will call each item in the order listed in the agenda after taking care of some preliminary matters in the morning um, of dealing with referrals and, and things of that, that nature and approval of other minutes. In making your submissions where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee members may ask questions and or take the matter then into the committee for a decision. <clears throat> Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And uh, the clock is set up in the room and uh, we'll see when people are reaching five minutes, at which time I'll ask uh, uh, speakers to uh, please wrap up. Um, when addressing the committee, please state your name and address and please rem remember to confine your remarks to the items to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent goes first, makes their presentation to the committee on the application. Please note the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application have been informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak similarly for five minutes. And committee members may ask questions of each speaker at the end of their submissions. And when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues and answer those questions that were raised by the speakers. And that will then mark the end of the discussion. The applicant application is then taken into the committee for a decision. 
we have some preliminary matters to take care of before we uh, get into the uh, meat of the meeting. And that's uh, firstly to confirm the minutes from the June 19th, I believe it was hearing. Members, can I have a motion to approve those minutes? June 9th. June 9th, right, okay. I can make that motion. Thank you. Seconded by. Oh. Neil Farmer, thank you. And I don't, again, I don't see uh, Stan on the on the screen. I have not. Okay, so all in favor? Okay, the uh, motion is approved. Any, um, are there any declaration of interest of panel or staff to declare on the matters before us in this morning's agenda? Okay, none to declare, thank you. Um, okay, or then he, uh, we'll deal with deferral requests and uh, next, but uh, are there any files to be closed, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Uh, not today, but we do have a refund request for an older file that was previously dealt with. It's above item one in your agenda materials for 116 Regent Street. Okay, so let's deal with that now before we do the deferral requests. And that's, um, so if members, we can go and we'll deal with that. I don't seem to see that and it just disappeared. Oh, here, request for a refund. Okay, so uh, 116 Regent Street, um, we have a request for a refund. I guess we have a speaker on that. Madam Secretary Treasurer, is it gonna be Graham uh, Barrett? Or Ms. Uh, William Pereira. Okay. Good morning, committee members. Um, my name is William Pereira, I am the Home owner of 116 Region Street. And oh. I'm here um, to request a refund. Uh, basically, uh, just a overview of uh, what happened with our original application is that there was an error that was included both in the planning report and the, the notice that was mailed out. And that was regarding a exterior of a wall height variance. So it said that we were permitted seven meters when in reality we were permitted 8.5. And during our application process, the committee member that brought forward the motion to deny used that seven meters in his rationale. So we believe that that has a, a material effect on the outcome of our application. So we're asking uh, that we would be refund since we are right now in the process of uh, reapplying for a uh, a, a committee of adjustments for for the same property right you actually have a hearing uh item number 16 later this morning that's correct and just to, so is that that application similar and i also recall it was actually split uh was it a split decision because i see yes it was a three to two decision it was very close uh-huh okay um okay and then your rationale is that there was an error uh in the what was permitted in the uh in the notice that went out and that the member who made the motion mentioned that particular variance and it wasn't as great a variance as it turned out because of uh the error that was made okay That's correct. um members any questions for mr Pereira? and again you'll have to speak out i can't see up hands up on, on the screen so if you have a question or okay, there's everyone. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Pereira? Palmer, um, sorry for the applicant. Did you um, seek restitution through the representative you had at the hearing rather than through um, the committee and the city? Uh, well, we spoke to the to the agent ab about the matter, and they they told me they were under the assumption that the city had provided the correct information. So that's something that we're, we're currently doing with, but uh, that's a conversation that we've had for sure. That's a very good point you bring up, Mr. Palmer. Perhaps we should hear from staff as to what the city's position is and uh, whose error or ultimately to catch the uh, uh, any uh, mistakes in, in, in what's permitted as opposed to what's requested. Um, you have any opinion or or not opinion but can you kind of clarify what what happened here with respect to that mistake in that variance who's ultimately responsible for that uh so kyle canuck who's the secretary treasurer and our director 
did respond to the original refund request and it was refused. It is attached in your package. Um, I believe part of the rationale is if you look at the planning report on file, uh, they address the permitted height in two areas, but in their actual recommendation, they do reference the correct number, which is what I believe the member addressed when they were making their motion. Okay, so it appears that the member would have been made aware of the fact that in fact, 8.5 meters is permitted, not seven meters. Sorry, that, that's incorrect because the Sorry, member- I, we're not, I did not, we're, we're not having a discussion here. I asked a question, you should be muted right now, sir. Thank you. You'll have a chance to respond when, when the secretary treasurer finishes speaking. Thank you. Can please, Barb, please continue. So what's shown on your screen is where they reference the correct height. Unfortunately, um, no one brought the discrepancy to our attention so that we could have fixed it. And it was brought up after the hearing um, and after the decision was made. Okay. Okay, members, you have all the facts you need to, well, what we should, I, in fairness, let's miss, let Mr. Prayer respond to uh, what Ms. Bartosik just had to say. Yeah, so I was always made aware of the error because so there was a property that was uh, had an application in the neighborhood. And when I pulled up their application, this thing passed unanimously. They had the correct variance of 8.5 permitted. Another thing, too, in that planning report on page two, the variance number seven includes the incorrect number of seven meters and the rationale for the community member that brought up the percentage height. I have the the recording the youtube video they use the seven meters to come up with a 35 percent there is no way you can come up with 35 percent without using the seven meters as the permitted uh value okay yeah mr chair yes sir don taylor and i i'm the uh, so far so far unidentified person that uh, made the motion on this and okay. I remember I remember the application clearly. Yes. And uh, as you and my other colleagues know, I do have a propensity to crunch numbers on things. And I definitely remember uh, developing the 35% variance extent. And uh, it did very much influence my motion. Um, I, the information I used was the information before me. The variance is requested in the notice. I didn't pick up on the discrepancy in the planning report. And uh, I guess apparently no one else did until after the decision was made. So I'm just I'm just sort of offering that as sort of personal background because I uh, I did have a role in the decision. Best evidence. Best evidence. I didn't <laughs> you were the actual speaker, you remember, so members or or I was Taylor himself. Uh, to make a motion on the request for a refund. One last question, if I may ask another question, it's Stan. Um, the item that's before us in agenda item 16, is it essentially the same application that was presented uh, previously? Essentially, yeah, it's, ex it's the same application, but in this uh, application, we're doing an underpinning. So the initial application was to do the exact same desi design but not underpin. But since it was denied, we had to go back to the architect and redraw the, the design. And this one now includes underpinning, so the heights are way lower than they were before. So would it perhaps make more sense to ask for a refund on this application as opposed to the last one? Which one, the, the application that's forthcoming or the one that already yeah. happened? So you've paid for, you've, you've yeah, paid for me, both now, essentially. To me, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's this one or if it's the next one. I, I don't know if that matters, Stan, to the city or not, whether it's this one or not. I think it's the same amount. So uh, yeah. that's up to the city and the applicant to decide which one gets re in the event that there is a motion to refund. Okay. I'll just work that out with the applicant. But uh, so I'm waiting on a motion to segue on, on the uh, request for a refund. Well, Mr. Mr. Chair, I, uh, Taylor, again, I. I feel comfortable making a motion on this, given my role in the original matter. Um, I'm I'm comfortable with the fact, or I, I agree with the fact that the the erroneous uh, variance request last time was 
instrumental in the decision that was made. And uh, I don't believe it's reasonable to charge two fees for basically the same thing. Uh, we're gonna be dealing with it again today. So I would move approval of the refund request. Okay, thank you. I see Ms. Alderson's hand up seconding that. Any comment? All in, if not all in favor. And it's unanimous. The uh, one of the two application fees will be refunded. Uh, is the decision to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Pereira, and we'll either see you or your agent a little later on this morning. Thank you so much, committee members and, and everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have some deferral requests uh, on the I on when as well clear those from the agenda as we typically do. So if we can go to the consolidated planning memo. Uh, we have a little bit out of order. They're all in a row, 18, 19, 20, and 21, but our morning agenda only goes up to uh, 19. So we'll deal with uh, 19 first and then 18. 19 is uh, 34 Agar Crescent. It's an application uh, for detached dwelling with attached garage. Okay, no need to go into the particulars. It looks like this application is a also uh, at the eight applicants request. It's for uh, rec deferral recommendations one and two. And also we have the applicant requesting it in our package and to make changes and address planning concerns. Uh, we can, who's the speaker or speakers for this application? I don't have my to get my mem my screen up who's the uh the attendee or for, for item number uh 19 yeah mr chair it's juan martinez we have currently have him unmuted okay hello sir good morning sir chair okay just on the record i introduced the matter we have your request for a uh a deferral and the reason for that we just want to just keep you on the line and uh confirm that's the case and uh, we'll see if the uh, members are prepared to make the motion. Any questions for uh, for the agents? If not, can I have a motion to defer? And here we, are, we have the applicant's request up on the screen. Uh, Palmer, I'll move for deferral. Okay, thank you. Seconder. Ms. Alderson, thank you. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. The application is deferred. So we'll move on to item 18. Item 18 is 46 Watercliff Road. Uh, it's for reason number two. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, apologies for interrupting. We currently don't have um, the agent online. Um, for this particular application, item number 18. So if we could come back to it um, once we see him on the list, that'd be great. Okay, perhaps he uh, he is he is attending. Have you done a sound check for him today or no? Uh, we haven't seen him on the attendee list, nor was it confirmed during the sound check. So um, we'll do our best to keep our eyes peeled for uh, the agent as they come forward. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so that's the only other two requests are in the afternoon session. So I guess we can go back to the top of the agenda. Item number one, start uh, hearing uh, applications. Uh, so item number one is one Toffee Court. And it's an application instructed new one story addition above the existing building in the new rooftop amenity space. There are three variances. And all we have on file is an arborist report. Um, I'm just opening to see who the speaker is on this application. It is um, Julius Horvath is the agent and we have the owner on the line. Uh, this is an application again, the first one we're going to have uh, actually the deputant uh, on the video. So we'll just pause while staff uh, attends to getting uh, uh, Mr. Horvath added as a, uh, as a panelist on and on and uh, and we'll have his video available. Go ahead, Julius. See myself there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Th thank you. Thank you. Do we see? Oh, there he's. Oh, there we are. Yep. Welcome. I you are actually the the actual very first 
Jackie <laughs> Pinto, at least for Tobacco York to appear on screen. Post am, so congratulations. Thank Good you very evening. much. I'm very honored to be part of uh, part of this historical moment. <laughs> it's so so far so good. Uh, that's such a, such a long contentious application, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not contentious. So yeah. Uh, say so, yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, as required, I'll state my name and address. So uh, my name is Julius Horvath, uh, architect. Uh, and my uh, my address is way up north here in 25 Bonnie Meadows Drive in Aurora, not too far north actually. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I'm representing uh, the uh, the client uh, Luca. I believe he is uh, listening in uh, this morning uh, with regards to the the variants that are being asked for. Uh, so uh, with the clock running, I'll just quickly go go through the the. Uh, the site plan. I believe you said you only have the, the Arbus report, but I'm assuming you've got. Oh yeah, you know, I, I, yeah. When I make my uh, introductions, I I don't uh, state the the location map and the survey and the plans, which are on every application. I just sort of uh, cut to the chase of what we have oh, and okay. what we don't have. So we don't have uh, you know we don't have comments by neighbors or city departments. So again, mm. like a, a very straightforward application. Great. Great. Okay. So, so basically, yeah, so the variance is being requested. Uh, I'll quickly run through the item four from the zoning review was the, uh, the FSI of floor space index uh, allowed one. We're asking for just a little bit more at 1.12 uh, to sort of fill out that, uh, that second floor uh, space, the usage. Uh, so that one is fairly straightforward. Um, then the the other uh, two variants. Uh, one was the uh, the accessible parking space. Um, so we were proposing a, a space of actually five point four eight six. So you can call it five point five as the depth. Um, I think they they noted it as five point zero seven as the depth or or length. I should say. Um, I think they took that dimension. Uh, which was making reference to a, a building face relative to lot line. Uh, but right underneath it, where it says BF parking stall, there's the actual parking stall dimension. We can make that into 5.6 as required. It's only uh, you know 0.1 meters off, so that that is no no problem. Uh, the, the width uh, we have is 2.7 meters wide, plus we've got the 1.5 meter. Uh, I guess walkway, which would typically be complementary to the, the the parking stall. So perhaps the 3.9 that's being asked, um, uh, perhaps that would be interpreted as the 2.7 plus the 1.1.5. Um, you know, I'm not too sure. That's typically what I you know from other municipalities how that kind of has worked. So I kind of leave that to the, to the committee perhaps to to provide feedback. Um, lastly, the parking stalls. So there's currently six on site. Uh, the, the requirement was for 10. Uh, so we were proposing seven initially, uh, but then we spoke to planning. They had requested to, to sort of add some bit of beautification to the site, uh, which resulted in a parking spot near what would be called grid one adjacent to the other uh, lot uh, to be converted into some soft landscaping, uh, just to sort of lend some, again, some sort of whatever little we can do to to um, add some beautification, I suppose, and for lack of a better description, uh, to the site. Uh, so that resulted in six spots, including the barrier-free parking stall. Uh, the owner has no issues. They have operated, uh, are currently operating with employees. Uh, that don't need any more than the five stalls. Typically, sometimes maybe two or three. Uh, the operation doesn't require hardly anybody there on site. Uh, so they are, I don't know if he'll be able to confirm that they, they are not, if he's just, uh, uh, you know, listening in. Uh, but um, yeah, so so we're fine with the six. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the committee uh, would view, so it, view the it same. Meets, it meets the needs. There's... Your, your position as it states the needs. Okay, so thank you uh, for your presentation. Let's just see if uh, members have any questions for you or if someone's ready to uh, 
make a motion. Chair, I've just been notified by community planning. They did submit a report and it did come on time. I'm not sure why it's not in your package. Um, they did ask for three conditions to provide a landscape plan, to provide a letter of credit and a 1.5 meter privacy screen along the north side of the outdoor rooftop amenity area. Um, I'm not sure. So is the, uh, is the agent uh, aware of that? Mr. Horvath, are you aware of that community planning memo? Uh, well, we didn't see it, uh, maybe you did? We didn't see uh, it. So sent in yeah. our additional materials. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm aware of the of the request and, and have confirmed with with the, the owner that we're absolutely fine uh, with that. Okay. So you don't need time to confer with your client to see if those conditions are acceptable. You're aware of them and they're acceptable to you and your client. Correct. Okay. Awesome. I still have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Um, for the applicant, uh, Mr. Horvath, um, I'm just wondering whether, since you're asking for amenity space on the roof and you're only using part of that roof for a patio, was mm -hmm. a green roof ever discussed for the rest of it? Was it ever was it ever discussed as an option? Uh, it wasn't really discussed as a, as an option. I mean, we will use uh, you know. Like I typically do best practice for what I can. So, it, it, so by Toronto's definition, I guess, uh, you know, there's various levels, obviously, of, of, of green roof. And, you know, we're not going through a site plan approval. I understand there's a new tier or version four, tier one. Uh, and we're probably going to use like a reflective, the intent is to use some sort of reflective uh, roofing material, uh, but not green roof in the sense of, of like a live roof. Uh, you know, however, we, you know, I guess during the permitting process uh, and discussions, the design of the client, uh, we, we may entertain whether it's it's not like full planting, you know, there's some structural implications, but per, perhaps something uh, in and around the immediate area of the patio. Uh, yeah, just, like just I, in and around the skylights and obviously not including the patio, but in and around the skylights, I think it would be a nice addition. There is so much hardscaping in that area, which is why mm. I ask and I'm happy to see that community planning has put forward those conditions uh, for soft landscaping. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. No, no problem. Sorry, a uh, question, uh, Palmer here. Uh, just the, the 1.5 meter area be, beside the um, accessible parking spot, is that at the mm -hmm. same grade? It's, it, for Correct. Accessibility? Yeah. yeah, it's all the same grade, yeah. Okay, so it's just, when I looked at the site plan, it shows sort of some some cross patching, and that's just to depict that it's a, a different pavement structure or something like that. It's the safety yellow paint that you typically see okay. just to ensure that's a walkway. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Great. Okay. Any other questions or um, someone ready to weigh in with a motion? And there is no urban forestry conditions. I'm I'm ready for a motion. If there's no further questions, I'll uh, move for approval. Uh, variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the Planning Act, subject to the um, conditions from planning. Okay, thank you, Mr. Palmer. I've seconded for that motion. Ms. Alderson, thank you. Any comment? If none, uh, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, uh, Mr. Horvath, and congratulations and. Uh, it's great to see a, a face with the voice uh, after so long. Absolutely. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I'm glad this went well. And yeah, I'm old school too. I like to see faces. So maybe next time we'll be in person for the next project. Sure. Yeah, this this yeah. works. Right. right. Appreciate your time very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Okay. Hi, hi, Mr. Chair. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Um, we have um, item number 18. We do have the uh, agent on the line if you'd like to hear that uh, item now. Okay, so item number 18, 46 Watercliff Road. It's a second story addition above the existing uh, dwelling. It's a two story side addition, north and side additions, seven variances. Transportation has no objection. And we have a request from community planning item D2 uh, for a deferral. And uh, let's hear from the uh, applicant then or agent. And that is. Please state your name when you're speaking. 
Yes, uh, very good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Nelson Espinola here as the agent for the application. Yes, welcome. So uh, you're aware that community planning is requesting that this, this matter be deferred? Yes, I'm aware of that. And uh, we, uh, we are in, a, in agreement to have the uh, application deferred so we can uh, change our plans and see if we can reach some sort of uh, a compromise here with the uh, design. Okay, um, committee members, any questions? Uh, or can I have a motion to uh, defer this matter? If no one has any questions, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. Based on deferral recommendations number one and two, uh, I move for deferral. Okay, uh, this one I think was only number two. I could be wrong. I think it's number one as well. Okay. Anyway, that's what I have on my list here. So can I have a seconder for that motion? Mr. Taylor, thank you. All in favor? Okay, the matter is uh, unanimously deferred. We'll see you back here again, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good okay. day. You too. Okay, so item number two is seven ba Balladur Courts. Uh, second story rear addition above the existing dwelling, three variances, absolutely nothing on file. And the speaker uh, will not be appearing by video. Uh, it's uh, Zudong Tang, the agent for the applicant. Hello. Hi. Morning. 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 Uh, very straightforward application, sir. I don't believe we need um, a presentation from you. Uh, is there anything you'd like to advise the committee members or can I just see if they have any questions for you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, dear committee of judgment. So I'm Shudong Tang from Heart of Design and uh, here to represent Danish Mohan, uh, the owner of seven bilateral court. First of all, the one of the zoning notice which sent by the zoning examiner was wrong. Because it, could you please show the mm -hmm. zoning notice? You can see the proposed uh, building length and the proposed building depth is 19.6, which is incorrect. What is it? What should it be? Uh, I was sending a video form and uh, requesting relief the maximum building length from 17 to 19.6. This is correct and the relief the maximum building depth from 19 to 26.7. You need 26.7? Yeah, 26.7. Okay, so uh, uh, obviously then we cannot proceed today, um, but let's hear from staff. Sir, you submitted the zoning review with your application. If there was an error, you should have flagged that before you even applied because that was sent to you and you provided that information to us. Okay, so the zoning notice was wrong, so I should add. Yeah, it, it's sent to you to review it before you even use it for committee of adjustment purposes, so. So we cannot uh, do this hearing today? No. Yeah, obviously we're gonna have to defer uh, because the notice is wrong, it's not what you want, so there's no point proceeding. Uh, okay. And then you can work it out with staff as to who's and get it correct, get back on another agenda. Uh, so let's not belabor that point. Any questions, members, or can someone uh, weigh in with a motion? Mm -hmm. I'm happy to make a motion for deferral. Okay, thank you, Ms. Alderson. Seconded, seconded for that motion. Stan Kamarik, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, sir, uh, you'll work it out and we'll see you here again. Okay. Thank you, so Mr. Deferral, Taylor. right? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, moving on to item number three then. Uh, 40 Lockheed Boulevard, an application to construct a new ancillary structure, which is a pool cabana in the rear yard. There is only one variance uh, coverage from 33% to 33.4%. Uh, that is the only uh, variance. We have uh, one speaker, the owner, uh, uh, Michael uh the camelus and he um he is requesting to appear by video so we will pause while that is attended to
And again, sorry, we have absolutely uh, nothing on file um, on this application. No comments from neighbors and, and no comments from city uh, departments. Hi, Michael, go ahead. You're on the line there. Oh, thank you. Uh, good morning, committee members. Uh, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, my name is Michael Dicknos. I am the homeowner. Um, uh, so this is a first for me, so I'm not sure exactly what I should do other than to say that I, I've uh, applied for a variance of um, 33%, uh, which is, is the uh, uh, allowed uh, lot coverage. I've uh, requested, uh, uh, as part of my application, a variance for 33.4% uh, lot coverage in order to build the uh, cabana. Yes, thanks, sir. Uh, you haven't done this before. I could think of, uh, I've been doing this for 25 years. I can think of no, nothing that's more minor than a 0.4% variance that's equal to <laughs> uh, two and a half square meters. So you're, uh, you're actually over two and a half square meters or you wouldn't even have to be here or have made it up. Just trying to follow the rules. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so why don't I see if any members have any questions for you? Um, if you want to stick around and watch it on YouTube, you want to see some more contentious matters, you may have some uh, later today. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly not yours. Uh, so any questions? Okay. Uh, any uh, any uh, questions, or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? No one has any questions. I'm ready to weigh in with a motion. This is a very straightforward application, as our chair stated, and I'm happy to make a motion. Uh, for uh, acceptance, uh, because I believe it meets the test. Okay, thank you. Seconder for that. Mr. Kumar, thank you. All in favor? Okay, you have your approval. Enjoy your pool and cabana, sir. Thank you after very much, everybody. Time. And uh, after, yes, after, after it's all done. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, the next application is item number 437, Elizabeth Street. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. And there's six variances. Uh, we have revised uh, a revised waiver and plans, but we don't have anything highlighted. So we'll hear from the applicant on that. We have some uh, neighborhood photos submitted in the additional materials. We do have the revised notice, uh, which has been highlighted. Uh, there were six variances, five of which have been reduced and urban forestry requesting conditions one and two. The agent is David, David Eagleman, uh, and he is uh, will not be appearing by video. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, David Eagleman here on behalf of the owner. Okay, very straightforward application. Um, I don't believe we need a uh, fulsome presentation. Is there anything you'd like to let committee members know or uh, before we see if they have any questions for you? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, if I, I know you mentioned that you do have a revised notice, however, you get that up on the board. The revised notice from the uh, additional materials received yesterday that I referred to in my remarks. It should show the highlighted uh, notice. Yeah, there we go. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Everything looks correct as per that revised notice. Um, so I don't need to walk through the variances. I'll just note that uh, we have made those revisions as a result of uh, our consultation with planning staff and they are uh, satisfied with those revisions and uh, we are acceptable to the recommended conditions from urban forestry and we have not uh, been made aware of any concerns from surrounding neighbors. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Eagleman. Any questions or members or some ready for a motion? Oh uh, yeah, question from Palmer here. So, um, Mr. Engelman, um, are the revised variances, are they depicted in a plan that we may have received? Because we have three sets of plans listed. One is revised plans, no change to variances. Another one's revised plans and another one's plans. And you know, initially when I got this yesterday with revised variances, I was a little confused, maybe shocked that I didn't have a plan to go with it. And then I looked in the package and there appeared to be a plan that we received with our original package 
which didn't match the variances, but now it appears to match the variances. So is that in fact correct that we have a plan that matches the variances as revised? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, to answer your, your question, uh, Member Palmer, we do, there is a revised set of plans on file that uh, should be within the committee's package. Those plans are dated um, as per the the city's in application information center. They are dated June 15th, 2022. Uh, however, on the actual uh, plans, they are dated June 3rd, 2022. So those are on file and they do match the revised variances. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions for Mr. Eagleman? And if none, is someone ready to uh, uh, provide some comment and uh, make a motion? Mr. Kamarik? Yeah, I, I find uh, that the revised application meets the four tests and therefore would like to uh, move approval subject to forestry conditions one and two. Okay, thank you. Is there a seconder for that motion? Ms. Alderson, thank you. Any comment? All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Eagleman. I think we're going to see you or at least hear you later on uh, as well today. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, our next application is item number five, 23 Highgate Road. We have a revised uh, notice uh, highlighted to show changes. Uh, this is to construct two-story addition and construct uh interior alterations a previous committee of adjustment application refused all variances we also have as i stated the revised variances two of the three have been uh altered and um i just have a note here yeah urban forestry is looking for conditions one and two and the additional materials we have a uh, uh, series of um, committee of adjustment precedents uh, my question for the agent, uh, when we hear from the agent, is Patrick Pearson, uh, is uh, how this application is different from the other one. If we could uh, include that in this presentation. And um, I just have a note that back in March 24th, the looks like community planning wanted deferral. The applicant wanted to proceed, and the matter was refused. So uh, we also have on the line both adjacent neighbors. Uh, registered to speak and no one has uh, opted to appear on video so uh, let's hear from uh, the applicant good morning mr chairman good morning committee members my name is patrick pearson i am the homeowner at uh, 23 highgate road and i'll be presenting our request today um, i'll attempt to answer your questions off the top but if i miss any please let me know um, our request today is for no, the committee, yeah, I just want to just point out because I I was stopped in the middle. I didn't continue my just presentation just to say what we have before us, other than the standard location map and the survey and plans. We do have an arborist report, supporting materials, which perhaps staff can get on the screen, um, and we have the previous materials from the last hearing as well as uh, letters of support. So I just wanted to clarify what's before us. And uh, anything you'd like put up on the screen, uh, you can staff can do so. Okay, thanks very much. Right, Sorry for the fault. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, for the... Go ahead. Sorry for the fault. Sorry. Thank you. Um, my, my bad. Go ahead. No, I think it's me. I'm excited. <laughs> um, today we're we're here to request three minor variances in relation to a proposed two-story addition and internal uh, renovations to our home. Uh, we are looking for committee's approval on lot coverage at 35%, uh, an increased floor space index at 0 0.65 times and a uh, soffit height of 6.96 meters. Um, just for clarity, and you brought it up, there was some amendments made uh, in discussions with the planning department. So for clarity, I am referencing the revised zoning waiver and revised plans dated June 21st in the supporting material. Um, in those uh, lot coverage reduces from 35.1 to 35 and FSI reduces from 0.68 to 
Um, not huge reductions, but reductions nonetheless. Um, we're, as it stands today, we're a family of six people that don't fit in this house as it stands, and we feel like we have come up with a good plan to maintain the streetscape and maintain the spirit of the neighborhood without um, and giving us the space we need to live. I'm, I'm confident the requested variances meet the requirements of the Planning Act and the requirements of the committee as they're both minor in size and impact. Uh, they're appropriate for the development and use of the neighborhood. It is a house built in 1947. We really enjoy its character, but it really is hasn't had many renovations and is limited in function functionality on the on the inside. Um, in our supporting documentation uploaded on June 28th, we included 17 comparables from the neighborhood, 14 of which are within 400 meters of our house at 23 Highgate. And, and the previously approved variances on these homes range for uh, a GFA range from 34.2 to 48.5, and a floor space index variances range from 0.61 to 0.8. So we are, we're well within those variances and, and consistent with other homes in the neighborhood. Um, you know, I do believe we meet, uh, meet the general intent of the bylaw. I'd like to point out that we are not asking for any height, length, or side setback variances. We're, we're sticking to the, to the requirements or the fitting of the lot, and it meets the general intent of the official plan as we're trying to modernize and develop an old home so it will maintain its functionality without changing the streetscape. So you had, you had referenced that this was a denial of a previous plan um, and what, asked, what had changed from that time to today. I, there was a large wall, uh, which was the, the height of the proposed renovation was the initial objection of the neighbors back in March. Uh, the height of the height, the wall height uh, variance has been completely eliminated as well as the soffit heights have re been reduced significantly from 7.17 to 6.96. We've, we've pushed the south facing wall in from the lot line. So reduce the, the encroachment on the lot and remove the excavated porch in the additional part of the building to, you know, we originally, we have eliminated the length variance. We orig were originally slightly over the allowable length. We are now more than two meters under, under the required length. So, um, we have made changes to accommodate the requests of uh, of our neighbors and tried to meet their um, meet their objections with the height of the renovation, but it seems to have changed now to FSI and GFA. In the previous hearing, um, there was there was a junior planner who had inadvertently requested a deferral and um, not at our request, which had created a lot of confusion and kind of turned the discussion into an error in, of, in an arborous report rather than the merits of the build and, um, you know, kind of forced the committee into a, a position where they had to approve or deny, and it was denied, um, albeit we have come back with changes to the, to the original objections to try to accommodate our neighbors. Um, I'll stop there if there's any questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions for the speaker? Okay, uh, then let's go. We're going to hear from the neighbors, and uh, sir, you'll have a chance to reply. Uh, first neighbor is Ashley Melito at 21 Highgate. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Nice to see you all again. My name is Ashley Melito, and I live at 21 Highgate Road. So the last time we were here discussing the pro proposal of 23 Highgate was March 24th of this year. The committee refused all variances of the plans, which were to add an expansive 18 foot two story addition to the existing home with a seven foot raised deck on the back spanning over 29.8 feet in height. The plans submitted for today's discussion are again to add the same expansive 18 foot two story addition with a seven foot raised deck with an identical height of 29.8 feet. On March 24th, this committee voted with zero votes in support of the proposal that these plans do not pass before test. The concerns that day were not the height of the proposal, but instead, one, the protection of the large Norway maple tree on our property at 21 Highgate, and two, 
the use and enjoyment of neighboring outdoor spaces and preserving the character of the neighborhood. Let's talk about the tree first. Now we spoke about this tree for almost 30 minutes last time we met, so it's near and dear to our hearts. As we found out in the Arborist report, the tree had been significantly underrepresented at 70 centimeters in diameter instead of the 96 centimeters it actually is. And a sufficient tree protection plan was not in place. Mr. Mora, uh, the developer who was representing Mr. Pearson at the last hearing, was reminded by the chairman on that day, day that he is to quote, come to the committee with clean hands. Urban forestry requests a permit to injure, likely based on the assumption the information in the Arborist report is accurate. However, I'm once again calling into question the accuracy of the document CA Arborist report posted June 15th and ask that get, that gets brought up on screen to page eight of eight, please. Now, while that's coming up, if it's okay if I keep talking, I wanna make sure I make the most of my five minutes. <laughs> Um, I'll speak to my personal experience since March 24th. Somebody came to my door on April 25th and introduced himself as an arborist from the city. After letting him onto our property to measure the tree in question, tree number four, it became clear that he was not in fact from the city, but had been hired by the applicant. In discussions, he agreed with me that there were large discrepancies in the first arborist report. While measuring the tree, he also cited he could, quote, make this tree measure whatever you want me to on the report. He also Sorry, I just with... interrupt. Could staff please get, as requested by the speaker, uh, the photo record attached to the uh, NDTW MHDC uh, no. sorry report? The... This is the one that I want to reference, actually. No, but you want to have a picture. Oh, you wanted that drawing? Oh, I'm sorry. I want this drawing. <laughs> yes, thank you. Hey, my, my mistake. Sorry. No, no problem. Okay. When this report was published, the name confirmed that this person who identified himself as a city employee was in fact the same arborist who had submitted the last errant report at the hearing on March 25th. This new report that we're looking at posted June 25th indicates that the inventory of trees was carried out using the current survey of the property. However, no trees appear on the posted survey of the property, which is 22 years old, might I add, dated March 2000. Nor are there any measurements from the trees to any structure or lot line, despite the arborist taking these measurements on site on April 25th. There are no GPS coordinates of the trees. It's very unclear how the trees were located, who located them and by what method. Now, if you can zoom in, the distance, I don't know if that's possible, but the distance from the property line as per this report is 3,390 millimeters. So I've confirmed directly with the applicant that this 3390 you scroll over there just on the right hand side is in fact a millimeter measurement and I can confirm the distance from tree number four to the property line is 2.1 meters or 2100 millimeters which means this is a 5.4 meter protection zone not the six meter zone that this report indicates it in once again having planned an insufficiently sized tree protection zone could cause potential harm to this large and irreplaceable tree I'd also like the committee to note that in the last hearing, we discussed the tree in our front yard as well, tree number six, having also been underrepresented in size. It's confirmed by urban forestry, as well as the arborist on his April 25th visit as an 83 centimeter tree, not the 74 centimeter tree that's represented here, which also warrants a larger tree protection zone than is reflected in the plan. In addition to this, the arborist report of June 15th does not match the revised plans on June 21st that Mr. Pearson spoke to. The report has a foundation of 1.28 meters from the lot line, and the plans have the same measurement of 1.64 meters. On, March, on the March 24th hearing, which you can turn, tune into on YouTube if you so wish at the one hour and 36 minute mark, the applicant proudly declares that he, quote, builds houses five feet from 80 foot oak trees. While the intention here may not be to kill the trees, the report clearly, again, shows a mix of inaccuracies and omissions that will put serious and unnecessary risks on the tree. My second concern is in regard to the requested variance is that we ourselves cannot build back on our property due to, you guessed it, the tree. So we will be boxed in on both sides. The proposed addition at number 23 being 28% larger in length and two meters higher than the addition at number 19. Thank you all very much for your, to the committee for your time and consideration today and once again refusing these variants. Okay, thank you. Uh, and thank you for staying just inside five minutes. Um, send me any questions for the speaker? 
Okay, if none, there's, we'll hear from the neighbor on the other side, uh, Matt Reichman at 25 Highgate. Who also Good morning, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Matthew Reichman. So my address is 25 Highgate. So along with my wife, we own the property um, immediately north of the applicant. We live here with our two kids. Um, just to speed along here, I'd ask kindly if the document posted on June 29th uh, could be open to the to the very last page. That's the first um, first document I want to reference, which is a side by side excerpt of um, the June 21st plan and the February 1st plan from the last hearing. It's on the way. Um, right. So um, so while that's coming up, I, I do want to start by saying, uh, unfortunately, my oh, no, is staff, is staff clear what what the uh, speaker is asking be put up on the board. Yes, I'm Mr. Chair. Quite clear. OK, thanks. Thank you. Um, so I would say, uh, unfortunately, my feedback as an immediate neighbor was not solicited by the applicant, um, nor were plans shared with me either before or after the submission was made. Um, and so as such, I, I can be certain that any changes made to this plan are not at all related to any feedback that came directly from our household. Um, so I think, uh, regrettably, this is a missed opportunity to increase the chance of approval, um, because I, I definitely understand and respect the desire to develop the property and add some more living space. Um, so um, on this letter, if we go right to the very last page, um, if that's all right, and zoom in. Um, the very first point I want to make is just to demonstrate this proposal is fundamentally the same um, as the application refused in March, since it's neither a new plan, um, nor is it substantively changed um, from that uh, proposal. Um, so if we can just pause for a second, I think this is the other, um, the other neighbor's letter that we have on the screen. Should be at the very last page of the uh, site plan comparison. Sorry, can I just? I'll bring that file up. The clock Continue. Stop for a moment. Yeah, thank you. If you could just continue. to point out for the members, those in our bookmark is letters of support, but they're not letters of support. They're letters no, of. No, no, no. Yeah. Our, our bookmark shows. I was just. I don't know if you see that, but. We have bookmarks and it's, they're under letters of support. Yeah, so I'm uh, the, my very next statement is to reference on screen. So I hope it's okay that we just uh, wait just yeah. a moment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It looks like the clock has been stopped. I, I think I might use my whole five minutes. So I do appreciate pausing yeah. the clock okay. for a moment. Not a problem. And I think Mr. Pearson did go over. So if you need to, don't, don't uh, let you go over as well. Great. Thank you. Yes, uh, this is perfect. So, um, so on the screen, um, I did uh, prepare a comparison of the June 21st site plan, which is the most recent on the left. And then the February 1st site plan, that was the site plan as part of the, the, the previous refusal on the right. Um, to show some of the key measures do remain the same. So the height is exactly the same, 9.02 meters. Uh, rear setback is the same at 10.62 meters. So those are identical. Uh, notably, on the actual drawings uh, on the same day, on June 21st, on the separate document, the height is actually 8.94 meters uh, for some reason. So I return to that in a second. Um, can I just I'll just take a moment if uh, ask the chair if the committee would like to see this drawing, or should I just continue verbally? It's it's different, different different height measurement. Okay, just put yeah, it as well proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, so I do see the, um, the rear gabled roof has been redesigned. The main floor and second floor um, are identical in layout. Um, I do say they are reduced somewhat in width by 56 centimeters and 35 centimeters respectively, but. Uh, in my view, these are not substantial enough to warrant a different decision um, in this case. Um, I do want to touch on the length and coverage, um, which do show, so on this page, you can see they do show different numbers uh, between the two plans. Um, in both cases, the difference is actually not due to a change in the actual length or coverage of the above grade structure. Um, it's actually because part of the structure, which is the rear raised deck, is now excluded from the measurement on the revised plan. It still exists. 
Um, as uh, Mr. Pearson uh, noted, it is now built over unexcavated ground rather than over basement living space. But um, I want to point to the two lines that just say coverage. So you see um, on the left, uh, the June 21st site plan says coverage 40.1%. On the right, February 1st, you'll see coverage is 39.2%. Um, so actually the new structure uh, does take up more of the lot. The above grade structure proposed does take up more of the lot than what was proposed in February 1st. Uh, the variance uh, is calculated in such a way that I suppose it can, um, you're allowed to remove the unexcavated uh, space where the deck is now sitting. So I just wanna make sure I called that out to indicate how similar these plans are. Um, the second point, I just wanted to call out some errors and inconsistencies, which uh, I think we called out on the last application as well. Um, I already mentioned the height. Um, I do want to pull up, if we can scroll up to the page above uh, kindly. Um, on that page, I do a comparison of the project statistics table. This is, again, on the left, we have June 21st. Uh, on the right, we have February 1st. And I want to call out two, two lines. Existing basement uh, one side or existing finished basement on the other. Um, in February, that was measured at 47.10 square meters. In June, that was measured at 62.62 square meters. Um, I can just pause for a second to make sure you're following it. This would be on the, on the um, just before the floor calx, just under the floor calx heading is where there's a measurement of the existing basement. Um, if you go, uh, further down, so near the bottom of each of those tables, you'll see a measurement for the existing second floor, measured at 69.49 square meters in February, uh, measured at 75.62 square meters in June. So uh, obviously the existing structure did not physically change in size um, in the 37 days between the last hearing and the new application being submitted. Um, and I'll just say quite frankly on this one, this is an error of, of a magnitude that I believe throws every other measurement and calculation into question. Um, there's a variety of other corrections that are on the file in the past few weeks. Um, so I would have just frankly expected this, these to be, have been found and corrected before the application was submitted. Um, so uh, I'm gonna be really quick on the last one. I just wanna cover the, the uh, comparables if that's okay. Um, I did notice the list of comparables uh, that were posted. Many of those are from, uh, that were also uh, posted um, from the previous application. Uh, there are some new ones. Uh, what's not showing are the ones that are actually on Highgate. So there are decisions that were rendered on Highgate Road. So very close, very relevant to this application. The largest floor space index approved is 0 0.61. So that was requested and approved for 47 Highgate Road and 26 Highgate Road in the last 10 years. Uh, none of the committee approvals um, included any requested variance for lot coverage. Uh, this application is requesting 30.35%, uh, which again, that is not including this um, raised rear deck this time. So uh, I'll wrap up. I love Highgate Road. I love the open air feeling. My kids love the large backyards, mature trees. Um, it really is distinguished from other nearby streets like Bellevale or Brentwood or other nearby streets. Um, and I, I thank you. I uh, appreciate the consideration of my feedback and happy to answer questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, any questions for the speaker members? Thank you for that very uh, fulsome presentation. Any questions for the speakers? If not, we'll go back um, to the uh, agent or uh, owner. I don't have my thing up on the screen right now. I was trying to look, I was trying to find the, um, the additional materials in terms of the precedents, which the neighbor just touched. So I'd like the applicant to please uh, touch upon that in his reply why, uh, with respect to what the applicant, the speaker just had to say about the precedents that have been provided. Okay, so let's go back for the rebuttal. Can you hear me? You can now, yeah. Oh, sorry, I wasn't sure I was unmuted. So I'll, I'll start with the last question first. With, with the precedents, um, as I mentioned, all 14 of the 17 precedents provided were within 400 meters of our home. So, Yes, they were not on Highgate, but it's hard to argue that Highgate has a special designation that requires that requires different zoning in my mind. I also draw you to the the location map uploaded on June seventh, where you can see on our multiple homes with uh, 
with rear additions on Highgate Road. 5, 11, and 15 all have additions that extend into the backyard as far as ours well. And now be at 15 and 11, I walk down the street, are, are one-story additions, but five is a quite lengthy two-story addition. And then number 19, with, which Ms. Melito referenced, is a, is a square addition on the back of the home that, that will extend the same length of ours and is a seven-meter flat roof, which is significantly higher than ours. So tough to argue that the precedent hasn't been set. In, in the neighborhood and we're not doing anything that's going to change the look and feel of the neighborhood. With, with reference to the concern around the height of the addition, we are not asking for a height variance. We're, we are within the allowable limits on height and, and, maintaining, and maintaining the integrity of the, of the street with, without exceeding height variances. And with respect to the Arborist Report and, and the tree, um, our, I, am high, I have high, a high level of confidence that MHBC did not represent, represent themselves as the city. We did ask them to go back in and get an accurate measurement because of the extensive debate last time. And it, I confirmed with the arborist that it is a six meter uh, tree protection zone on the tree in the backyard. So. You know, I appreciate the neighbors do not want us to renovate and have adjusted their concerns, but, you know, attempt, they're attempting to pick apart the plans and, and, you know, find reasons where we're trying to skirt the facts, which is 100% not the case. I have no issue with urban forestry's requirements. I do want to protect the tree. We enjoy the trees as much as anybody, and we'll, we'll do our best to renovate with limited impact on the trees. And a 7% impact into the tree protection zone is minimal, and we will do whatever is advised of us to, to minimize that impact as much as possible. With the comment on the elevated deck at the back, I really wish I could have a, a ground level deck, but with, we're trying to preserve the nature of the house it's four steps up at the front and four steps up on the back. And the only way to solve that is to, is to do a teardown, which I don't want to do. Um, you know, with, with fencing, shrubbery, you know, we don't want to look into the neighbor's backyard any more than we do. And we'll take all the precautions that, that we have to in order, order to preserve that. And I would also say we've got some privacy issues today. Our kitchen window looks right into a, an added kitchen window on the south side at 21 Highgate, and we're moving that so we don't have to look at each other while we wash dishes. There, there will be improvements with this renovation as well. Um, as far as soliciting feedback from the neighbors, we had them over, sat down with them, spent hours with them the first go around, got limited feedback from them, actually got feedback that we want you to renovate and we don't have an issue with what you're doing. And then we ended up with committee and adjustment in a similar fashion than this. So, I, I mean, I understand their position. I understand that renovations are an inconvenience. And if there is an a convenient, inconvenience-free way to do it, I would do it that way. But, but there really isn't. So we are trying to minimize the impact and give our family the space we need. Post-renovation, you're looking at a 2,600-square-foot house which is modest for the neighborhood and modest, modest for, for six people. So I think, you know, we have, we have worked our way into a proposal that I think, again, meets the four requirements of the committee and the plan and will maintain the spirit of the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Um, committee members, uh, any questions for anyone at this point, any of the neighbors or the homeowner. And if not, can um, someone prepared to weigh in with a motion with uh, some commentary? Mr. Taylor. Taylor. Hey, Mr. Chair, um, listening to the concerns of the neighbors, there's really two categories. One is the impact um, on trees. 
And uh, my inclination here, as, as it always is, is to rely on our professionals from the Urban Forestry Department. They've set conditions regarding trees. And um, I'm satisfied that uh, the imposition of those requested conditions will result in a satisfactory conclusion as they, re as they regard uh, the impact on trees. The other concerns had to do with the massing of the building, the, the height and the depth, uh, et cetera. Uh, but um, there are no variances for height or, or depth. Um, very modest increase in lot coverage of about eight meters squared. Um, the gross floor area, I don't see as a, an impact item because I think massing is really related to height, width, and depth of a building. Uh, and, and the changes uh, with respect to the bylaw aren't that uh, significant. So um, I would move approval subject to urban forestry conditions one and two. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Palmer? Yes, I agree with everything Mr. Taylor said. Uh, we have to look at the variances before us and uh, um, I think they're appropriate and I think there's enough protection um, with the um, forestry conditions. Um, so I will second that uh, motion. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. All in favor? Uh, it looks like it's unanimous. We have unanimous approval. Uh, thank you to Mr. Pearson and thank you to the uh, two neighbors who uh, who uh, spoke as well. Um, okay, we'll have, okay, it's 1041. We'd let, how about we have a 10 minute break at this point? Because I think the next one is, uh, is an opposed application as well. And um, so perhaps we'll break now for 10 minutes with everyone's permission. Okay, return at like uh, 1052.
Okay, welcome back. Yes, I guess everyone's back with us. And I see that the next uh, series of speakers, the next application will be appearing by video. So perhaps staff can uh, set that up. So the next application item number six, one Blue Goose Street. And um, okay, right. This is an application to modify the height standards for a portion of the proposed townhouse units. Uh, there is one variance, uh, very specific pursuant to the bylaw, um, both the location of the townhouses from the south side lot line and the east side lot line in order to permit a height of 11.5 meters to match the rest of the building. We have, I believe, three speakers on this application. Uh, we'll, we'll be appearing by video. Uh, firstly, David Bronskill, agent for the uh, applicant. Oh, sorry. We do have um, the owner available for for questions, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to also... members. I'd like to bring to your attention. There's only one area resident on the call. Okay, so that is. Uh, I can't read. Mark, Mr. Chair, members. Yeah, Mark Beasy is the area resident. It's seventy-two Cavell. So let's hear first from David Bronskill. I guess there are also on the line the architect and the owner available for questions noted in our, in our agenda. Good morning. All right. Uh, yes, I can. I thought we we're supposed to be seeing you as well, Mr. Bronskill. I, I think I've just started it. I hope oh, you there can you see are. Okay. Mr. Chair. This is, this is also a first for me at the committee. Um, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> Um, and thanks to staff for their ongoing management during of these matters during these times. Um, my name is David Bronskill. Um, I'm the law firm of Goodman's LLP. Uh, the address in non-pandemic times is 333 Bay Street, Suite 3400 in Toronto. Uh, and I'm here as the owner, uh, sorry, as the agent for the owner, which is One Blue Goose Developments, Inc. So, Mr. Chair, I was going to address three things just in my comments to you. One is uh, the history and the rationale for the variance. The second, I'll talk about the variance itself. And then third, just because it's raised in the city staff report, I'm going to have very brief comments on um, their suggestion that there should be a condition about the removal of commercial parking. Um, so just very quickly in terms of background, I think, sorry, sorry, go ahead, sir. I forgot to do the introduction. So obviously members, we do have a staff report as well as the cover letter and different materials, council motion, the site specific bylaw, height bylaws. And as Mr. Bronskill can uh, let's restart his time. There is a planning memo uh, requesting, um, which we've all seen. So um, dated June the 16th, but, either refuse the application or alternatively uh, recommend the proposed three commercial boulevard parking spaces uh, be removed. So the first instance they are recommending refusal, but I'll let you uh, have the floor, Mr. Bronsko, and please reset, this, re reset the, uh, the clock, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I think everybody knows uh, the Blue Goose in Etobicoke. Um, this is a development project that has uh, gone on for quite some time. Um, it's enabling um, the preservation renovation of that 100 year old heritage Blue Goose building. Um, and it's also enabling the provision of 30 new residential um, dwelling units as part of this. And it's in the form of 12 new freehold towns and semis and then 18 rental residential studios in that Blue Goose building itself, two of which are allocated to the City of Toronto for affordable housing. All of that has been secured in a site specific zoning bylaw 653 2020. It actually goes back to 2019. Um, and it's been a long process in respect of this site because although it's a small site, it's obviously quite complicated. Um, what is what has happened? And I'm not giving this background in an attempt to, to blame anybody, but Subsequent to approval of the rezoning uh, bylaw, there's been a full site plan approval process, and in fact, um, a full construction permit was in, was filed in August of 2021. 
Um, what has ended up happening is that a zoning examination notice in March of this year picked up this variance. And I can just say that the reason that um, it appears that this has been picked up is grade was being used throughout that entire process. There are in fact notice of approval conditions now issued um, in respect of plans that show the area that I'm about to talk to you about from March of 2022. Um, and that's because the site specific bylaw uses an established grade of 92.1 meters. Um, the plans as they were going through the process were using a different grade. And it was only when through that process um, Frankly, an arrow has found that the variance was was picked up. What the variance essentially deals with, and I don't know if staff can help find, there's an elevation uh, that was provided by our client that's colored, and it had the orange notch in the top corner of of the elevation. And as staff are are looking for that, and uh, with my thanks, it's a three foot ten inch depth on the third floor that would be filled in and it's not for all of the townhouses it's for town Sorry, I two. think it's labeled as heights and setbacks. Thanks Barb very much. Yeah, I think that I think you're right that's the one. I think it's just the next one down to staff. Oh, that's the one. Yep. That's that's helpful in showing where um, just above the it's above the schedule B's. This helps shows on the site plan where it is. It's those orange places. Those are townhouses two to eight and eleven and twelve. Oh, there's it coming up. Thank you. And this then shows what I'm going to call the orange notch. That's what the variance addresses. It's filling in that area um, on the third floor there where there's a bedroom. Um, so that's what we're asking. It's on townhouses 2 to 8 and 11 to 12. Um, and what it essentially does, and I won't ask staff to go and pick up the floor plans, where you can see it's there labeled as bedroom 3. Absent this 3 foot 10 inches, that bedroom would in fact have a depth of six feet and frankly would not be functional as a bedroom with that depth. This space, I don't know what it would be, probably type of a den or something, I guess. This space would otherwise uh, be extended down to where that green space is to include, uh, just make it a balcony. Um, filling in this space makes for a bedroom with a depth of just over nine feet and a functional usable bedroom. So it can be a three bedroom, a three bedroom unit. Um, in terms of shadows, as you saw in the site plan, um, these dwellings are to the north or to the west of the community to the south, so there are no shadow impacts. Light view privacy, whether it's a balcony or a window, I don't think there's any issue. And there would still be a 4.5 meter setback to the south. Um, I'll, I'll on a site plan, if, if staff can leave a site plan up for a moment, that would be, any of those are great. I believe Mr. Beasy, who's about to speak, is in fact to the southeast of the subject property. So if you go to the most southeast corner of the property, I think his property adjoins in that corner. And I would just note that no variance is sought in respect of the townhouse units numbers 9 and 10 that are closest to his property. Um, so the, the this additional 3 foot 10 notch is not adjacent in any fashion to his property. Um, just with my time, I'm going to deal quickly with the commercial parking. There's no variance here related to parking. NOAC have been issued showing the parking. I would just say to the committee, I, I don't think it's appropriate through a variance for this orange notch to be trying to secure the removal of commercial parking that is in fact on the site plans for which NOAC has been issued. I don't think that requested condition is related to the variances. And with all due respect to staff, I don't think the committee can impose it on the variance that's being sought. So there's an overall presentation, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to take questions now or after I come back once you've heard from the neighbor. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Bronsdale at this time? I'll obviously have a chance to respond to the concerns of the neighbor. 
Okay, if none, so let's hear, we include, can we have their letter up on the board, the neighbor at uh, 72 uh, Cavell, and I'm just looking also at the location map as to where he is located, uh, sort of in relation to the property. Okay, and again, Mr. Cavell is going to be appearing by video. Hello, can people hear me? Yes, we can. Can't see you yet. Hey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I believe you might have all heard me uh, repeat Mr. Cavell. I'm, my name is Mark Beasy. I live on Cavell Avenue at 72. Um, thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak. Um, Sorry, are we, also, be, are we going to be seeing you? It said you were going to be appearing by video. Uh, you're supposed to be seeing me. Yeah. Okay, let's wait till uh, staff uh, deals with that. <laughs> Mr. Chair, members, Thanks, the agent will need to turn, or the area resident will need to turn their camera on, I think. Oh, there you go. Okay. They don't okay. need to see me. <laughs> well, we can also now get your, if you'd like to have your letter up on the board instead of your, uh, your face, uh, and we can have that before us as you make your submissions. How's sure. that? Let's do that. The letter looks better than me. And we don't have to look at any of ourselves. Okay, if you can, it's the opposition letter dated uh, June 19th. Yes, okay, again, thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am speaking on behalf of myself, Mark Beasy. I live at 72 Cavell Avenue. Um, as was uh, stated a few moments ago, our property uh, abuts the southeast corner of the subject property. Uh, our backyard um, is uh, in contact with that corner. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bronskill, for providing some clarification in your statement a moment ago. Um, the hard copy letter that we received in the mail uh, earlier this month uh, was unclear as to just where the variance um, was, uh, just what portion of the development the variance was um, part of. And uh, again, also thank you for clarifying other aspects of it. Um, I am speaking on behalf of myself and the co-owner who you briefly saw, I think, on screen. Um, her name is uh, Catherine Zeman. She's a co-owner of this property. And my neighbors directly to the north of me at 25 and 27 Manchester Street uh, have also um, requested that I speak on their behalf. We don't uh, but I understand I'm only yeah. speaking for myself. Yeah. You're speaking for yourself unless we have something in writing authorizing them to speak. Right. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. So um, uh, I know I'm here to speak and not ask questions, but I am unclear about this process. Is there a response that's provided to speakers um, uh, that is either done here or in writing after the fact? Yes, sir. How it is you have a five, you have a presentation. Okay. You make your presentation at the end of it. Members may ask questions of you. Uh, okay. You may pose questions, retort, to, and Mr. Bronski will answer in his rebuttal if he so wishes. But it's not a back and forth. You have your five minutes served. Understood. Okay. okay. So um, we are generally concerned about the, the del development overall. We acknowledge that uh, the permits, the, the bulk of the permits, um, the uh, presumably a record of site condition was filed uh, five, six, maybe seven years ago. Um, but the development has a significant impact on the enjoyment of our property, uh, given that the setback from the corner of our property is, is no more than eight meters. Um, and it will have a significant impact on the it will have adverse impacts on enjoyment of our property, especially in the evenings, such that um, the new residents of those units may be overlooking directly into our backyard. Okay, sir, um, it's just, all right, I wanna just, just to assist you, we're not here to talk about the whole development. We're here to talk about the particular variances, variance at hand. We don't, okay. so it's the question of between what was previously approved and what he's seeking, they're seeking now. Yeah. That's what we're here to discuss. Okay. That's what well, you're the variance is, Oh, sorry. Forgive me. Um, yeah, forgive me. I'm new to this whole thing. <laughs> um, 
the variances will have uh, an increased adverse impact to the enjoyment of our properties, um, in particular along the east side, where there are concerns about um, the uh, uh, noise pollution from the uh, 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 rooftops of these townhouses, perhaps even safety concerns with related to uh, uh, the properties that directly abut these um, units that have the variants. Um, and then of course, uh, general um, privacy. Uh, and then of course, also the impacts of reduced sunshine onto our yard. Uh, this uh, development does unfortunately impact. I don't want to stop the development by any the very reasons that uh, Mr. Bronskill <clears throat> had outlined uh, in his presentation a moment ago. But we just wish to make, put it on record our concerns because they do have a direct impact on our property. And I want us to come out of feeling confident that those variances do not directly impact our property. Okay, thank you. We'll have Mr. Uh, Bronski respond. Uh, any questions first, um, Madam Committee members for uh, for the speaker, Mr. Beasley? Beasley. Okay, if none, let's go back to Mr. Bronsko for uh, a reply. Uh, hello again, Mr. Chair and committee. Just again, testing that you can hear me. Yep, and see you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, I'm going to ask staff could that um, schedule be diagram again thanks to to the deputy secretary treasurer and helping to identify that document for me as it's listed because i can i can confirm for mr beasley at least in my view i don't think there is any direct impact from the variances being requested on his property um as i'd indicated perhaps in a rushed rushed fashion to the committee in my initial submissions um the the subject property one blue goose and mr beasley's property meet at a corner and the two townhouse units at that corner, nine and 10, which um, present on an angle to his property, there's no variance being sought for this additional orange notch in proximity to his, uh, to his property. Uh, so there's, there's the orange notch. And then the next document down from staff schedule B side by side, if, if that could be put up. Thanks so much. I just see you zooming it. I appreciate it. Um, so you can see the green blocks are the townhouse blocks for which the variance is being sought. And they include townhouses two to eight and 11 and 12. And then that corner block that's in white, which is closest to Mr. Beasley's property. Um, there's no variance being sought for the orange notch. So. The relationship as approved by city council in the site specific zoning bylaw um, is is unchanged in that location. And then in terms of where that orange notch is is being filled in, as I indicated that three foot 10 inch depth and about five foot three inches in height, where it's located on those green townhouse blocks obviously are not going to cause any shadow impacts. Uh, on any of the properties to the south or to the east. And as I indicated, in terms of light view privacy, if that orange notch is not filled in, it would just be a balcony where someone could stand um, and, and look over the backyards. Uh, we just think it's a better townhouse with the full three bedrooms, which is why this is now being sought through the process. As I indicated, it was missed as a function of grade that this was non-compliant with the zoning bylaw. Um, we do need the variance because we've got NOAC in respect of these plans. Um, and overall, this, this in fact represents a more desirable use of the lands to enable that type of townhouse unit to have a complete third bedroom there. We don't think there are any adverse land use planning impacts. And as I noted, there's still going to be the 4.5 meter setback to the first and second floors would apply to the third floor. 
which will ultimately be an appropriate relationship. So um, we, we think it meets the four tests um, and should be approved. Um, I think that's responsive to Mr. Beasley, I hope. And then again, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you, Mr. Brunskill. Uh, any questions uh, to the speaker or uh, for any of the, the other speakers? I have a oh. quick question. The three commercial parking spaces were pre-approved in, in, the, in the site plan. Is that not correct? Th that's my understanding. And that's why we find, uh, three, Mr. Chair, that's why we find the request odd. I can actually layer on that, that it's more than, than just that. There's actually been a payment in lieu process through the city where our clients actually uh, paid money to the city about certain parking spaces through the process. So all of the parking has been resolved through, I would say, three processes. The zoning process, we've now got NOAC and the payment in lieu process. So the, the requested condition, I'm just going to say, is a bit odd. Um, and then in terms of repeating myself, it's not really related to the variances because whether this variance is approved or not, and I, I hope it is, um, um, it doesn't impact the location of that parking. It's not in any way related to that parking. So it's almost like a last effort to remove something that's already been approved. So um, I, I would just urge the committee not to impose that condition should you see fit to allow the variance. Yeah, it sounds like they're using it for leverage, but anyway. Okay, and just, just to, uh, wanted to clarify that. Right, and I just want to clarify. So basically, by the effect of granting this, we turn a certain number of uh, two bedroom and den units into three bedroom units because that room at six feet would not be functional as a bedroom. So, in light of uh, the city's desire to add more units and more bedrooms, uh, that is the net effect of how many for how many of the units? Um, it ends up being units two to eight. And so, Mr. Chair, I always have to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so seven, um, and then 11 and 12. So, essentially, nine units are affected by this variance. So, we're adding nine bedrooms to the city of Toronto. Mr. Connor? Uh, yeah, just question um, on the rear elevation, and I can't remember what drawing number it is. It appears that these third floor bedrooms have balconies, not balconies, sorry, they have um, sliding doors on the back with maybe a French, not a French balcony, a, what do you call that? A, a Juliet. Juliet oh, like balcony. a Juliet. Yeah, Juliet. Um, so I'm thinking nothing would prevent um, an application to allow the um, minimum size deck off of that sliding door, um, which could impact on the neighbors behind. I understand that question. I'm just pulling up the site specific bylaw through you, Mr. Chair. And so I'm just stalling for a moment. In terms of projections, I don't believe um, no portion of the shell book can be on the building envelope except the following projections. Okay, so it's in I'm just looking as to whether that would be projected. I, I, I would not have a concern if the committee said. Oh no projecting third floor balconies. Okay, um, I, I'm all right with that staff. Can we add that as a condition or is that beyond our scope? You know, I think it should be permitted because it's uh, related to the approval we're granting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's give staff weigh in on that. have to state what wording you want added if Mr. Brownskill can repeat what he had stated. If that's what the thank you, in. Yeah, thank you to staff through the chair. I it, it, it may be belts and suspenders, but I think in this instance it's belts and suspenders that would be justified. And so I think we could uh, say uh, that um, as a condition it would be, and I'm just making sure I look at the plan so that a zoning um, a zoning examiner uh could implement it and i think we could say 10 house plans level three. yes yeah, it is labeled as level three on the plans and so i think we could say um mr chair uh as a condition it would be no projecting third uh no projecting third floor balconies or no balconies projecting from the third floor 
you might want to say excluding the permitted Juliet balcony. You don't want to turn yes. around at that condition and say, sorry, you can't have a Juliet balcony now. So that would be helpful. Leave, leave that to you to uh, draft something or suggest some wording that. I mean, unless Juliet is defined in the bylaw. Yeah, it's probably not. It get tricky. It's... I mean, the fact that it says projecting balconies. Yeah, Juliet, well, Juliet wouldn't be projecting, so I don't think it would be excluded by that statement. I just want to make sure. Right. Yeah. And I did, I thank you for the caution. I did just look at the plans. I think the way the Juliet balconies are shown on the plans, they would not be projecting into the setback. Okay. Okay, so members, uh, someone ready to weigh in with a motion uh, uh, in, in matter. I, I just want to make one comment. Uh, now, with regard to the site plan, it would have been helpful to have shown some of the surrounding buildings so that we could have seen the direct impact of the setback on those direct properties. But anyway, just a comment. So, um, so the floor is open for someone to, uh, you know, weigh in with, uh, with comment uh, on a uh, motion on this matter. I think I'm willing to uh, to put forward a motion. Um, I, I believe the ap the application is minor and uh, would meet the four tests. Um, I'm a little confused, as is the applicant, with regards to the planning report because they're very focused on the parking spaces, which is not what's before us. So I'm going to disregard that. Um, I would suggest that we add the. Uh, restriction or the condition that no projecting balconies be allowed to be built on the third floor. Okay, thank, that, you. thank you for the motion, uh, Stan. Seconder for that motion. Mr. Uh, Taylor, hands up was first. Any comments, sir? Just well, I, I guess just uh, other than to say, uh, yeah, this is a significant um, functional improvement for the building and has minimal, if any, impact on uh, the neighborhood. So I'm totally supportive. Okay, thank you. All in favor? We have unanimous approval, Mr. Bronskill. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you to the committee and thank you for letting me see you and you see me. <laughs> okay, exactly. Get to see our new hairstyles. <laughs> um, thank okay. you, everyone. Uh, so next up application then is item number seven, 161 Barry Road. And it is an application to convert a portion of the existing basement into one additional dwelling unit. And the building for, will contain a total of six dwelling units. And there are two variances. Um, we have, um, Okay, we have a previous committee of adjustment during the September 2011. We have neighborhood photos, an arborist report. Planning is recommending refusal, saying it is not minor. Uh, Ravine and natural uh, feature production has no conditions. TRCA has no objection and advise that a TRC permit would not be required. And in the additional materials, we have a letter of objection from uh, uh, the tenant in one. Uh, Apartment 1, 155 Berrien. Uh, and uh, registered to speak on this application is, um, oh, David Eagleman and no other speakers. And he will not be participating by video. Welcome back, Mr. Eagleman. Yes, good morning again, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, and considering the report from planning staff, I presume that the committee would like a presentation. Uh, probably would be advisable. Okay, so uh, I will begin. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, good morning. My name is David Eagleman. I am a planner uh, from Design Plan Services here on behalf of the property owner. Um, and before getting into the variances, I would like to note that we have consulted with community planning staff regarding the application. Um, and unfortunately, as noted within their report, dated June 16th. They are of the opinion that this proposal uh, needs to go through a zoning bylaw amendment application. I respectfully disagree with this assertion 
as this is a very minor proposal that results in no exterior alterations to the existing building on the subject property. Um, additionally, I have reviewed the memorandums from both urban forestry as well as the TRCA in which they express no concerns or objections and do not recommend any conditions. Uh, regarding variance number one, the proposed number of dwelling units is six where four is permitted. A previous decision in 2011 permitted five dwelling units on the subject property and as such, the proposal will be providing only one additional dwelling unit greater than what currently exists on the property. The proposed additional dwelling unit is within the existing building and no exterior alterations are proposed. As shown in the submitted neighborhood photos, there are many larger apartment buildings containing, containing many dwelling units on Barry Road and throughout the broader neighborhood. And uh, as you can see in uh, the, the first photo uh, submitted, that is just across the street from the subject property um, where there are three apartment buildings with uh, a multitude of dwelling units within them. Um, the, the proposed apartment building will be in keeping with the existing character and will have little to no impact further than what the bylaw already contemplates, especially considering that the built form on the subject property will not change from what currently exists. The proposal will provide an additional dwelling unit to add to the needed rental housing stock of the city and the subject property is in close proximity to regular transit service along Barry Road and Park Lawn Road. It is also important to note that the subject property is designated as apartment neighborhoods in the official plan, which permits apartment buildings. There have been other approvals in the neighborhood for additional dwelling units, including at 165 Barry Road, which was approved for six units, and 119 Stephen Drive approved at six units as well. Uh, there was also approval, an approval at 117 Stephen Drive for five units. Um, regarding variance number two, the proposed number of parking spaces is five, whereas a total of seven are required. Transportation services did not express any concerns or objections to the proposed number of parking spaces. And this area is well serviced by transit, as I've noted, as well as public parking facilities nearby. Uh, this will allow for a reduction in parking on the subject property without having any significant impact on the area further than what the bylaw already contemplates. Uh, there have also been other approvals for a reduction in parking on the street and within the neighborhood, including 164 Barry Road, approved for 21 parking space parking spaces, whereas 32 were required. Uh, 187 Barry Road, approved for 28 parking spaces, whereas 35 were required. And 23 Cannon Road, approved for nine spaces, whereas 13 were required. So based on the provided justification, I'm of the opinion that this proposal fits in with both the existing and planned context, is consistent with the redevelopment trends along Barry Road and the broader neighborhood context. And for these reasons, I believe this application represents good planning and meets the four tests under section 45.1. I will be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Eagleman. So I just, can we put up your drawing A4 on the board? It's the basement and ground floor plan. Just want to confirm. So what you're showing there um, is a full apart. That's the sixth apartment. There are the additional units seeking to be added. It's got two full, two bedrooms and a study. It's got four windows along one side and one window in bedroom number one. I don't know if those are full above grade or window well type windows, but this is this is the unit. It's obviously above the standard size of, or minimal size for a, an apartment. Is that is that what we're talking about here? That's that, that's the unit. Through you, Mr. Chair, that is correct. Okay. Um, okay. So, and the city seems to feel you. They want you to go to. Uh, through some other process to get this approved and uh, notwithstanding the, the need for additional rental stock in the city. So that's my comment. Uh, members, any questions or comment for Mr. Eagleman or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Mr. Taylor? 
Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I find this proposal to be uh, very positive in terms of providing, uh, as you alluded to, uh, a much needed additional rental housing units throughout the city. Um, I don't believe that an additional unit beyond what is already approved in this building uh, is, uh, uh, is significant in a negative way whatsoever. And um, I move approval without conditions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. We have a seconder for Mr. Taylor's motion. Mr. Komorek, thank you. All in favor? Okay, unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Eagleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Okay, our next application is uh, item number eight, 639th Street to construct a second story addition above the existing dwelling new covered front porch. There are three variances and uh, we have correspondence. Oh, they were gonna ask for a deferral, then they canceled the request for a deferral. We have the long brandish character guideline checklist. We have nothing else left whatsoever, except in the additional materials. We also have a support pet petition. There's one speaker, uh, the um, Lucas Lopez or Mimi Vu. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Chair, it's uh, actually Rick Bongers is the agent and they'll be speaking on behalf of the owners. Okay. All oh, right. Okay, Mr. Bongers, and we're not appearing by a video, so we can proceed. Welcome, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Rick Bongers, 75 Redwood Avenue, Cambridge, Ontario. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't think we need a presentation from you. I see you have the Long Branch uh, Character Guideline uh, uh, filled out, and we don't have the uh, their uh, members here uh, registered to speak with objections. So uh, let's just see if anyone has any questions for you. Unless there's anything you'd like to uh, bring to the committee's attention. Uh, no, no, uh, but I'm, I'm more than willing to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Members? <clears throat> and if no, since no questions, is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? So just one quick question, just to confirm, uh, this is a straight top up. So the variance two is an existing condition, I'm assuming. Uh, yes, because we're enclosing the existing front stoop that factors into the new uh, front yard setback of uh, 3.82. Sure, but you're the existing. Uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, but you're not projecting beyond what's there now. No, we're uh, we're basically enclosing the front stoop, and that's what factors into that new uh, setback. We're not we're not going beyond what's there right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions, or is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Well, based on that, I'm willing to weigh in, saying that um, I believe it does meet the four test and is minor, and I would like to move approval. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kamarik. A seconder for that motion, Ms. Alderson. Thank you. All in favor, unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Bongers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Next application is item number uh, 952 Gardenvale Road. Uh, it's for a new deck and a new uh, ancillary structure in the rear yard, being a pool gazebo. There are two variances and nothing on file uh, whatsoever. We have one speaker, and that is Philip Bublet, the agent for the applicant. That's correct, yes. Okay, welcome, sir. Uh, I don't think we need a presentation. Would anything you'd like to advise the committee of? There was absolutely nothing um, on file other than materials filed. Yeah, basically, what's the, the, the two requested variances, very straightforward. So I have nothing to add to that. I'd be willing to ask and answer any questions if there are any. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions for uh, the speaker or is someone ready to weigh in? I'm ready to make a motion if no one has any questions. Okay. Uh, since we have nothing from any city department with respect to conditions, I believe this is minor in nature and meets the four tests and I move for approval. Thank you. Seconder for that motion. Mr. Taylor, thank you. All in favor, unanimous approval. 
Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Okay, that was easy. Uh, another easy one coming forward. It looks uh, item number 10, 34 Ellens Avenue. Uh, it's to construct a rear two-story addition, a new secondary suite in the basement, and a new rear deck. There are two variances. And we have 3D renderings, and uh, which I have a note here, very helpful. And other than that, we have nothing whatsoever on file. The one speaker on this application is Mario Silva. And Good morning, Mr. Have, Chairman uh, and Committee. Be by video. Hey, Mario. Mario Silva here for uh, for this application, 34 uh, Allen's Avenue. Okay. Uh, um, we have two variances, very, as noted. Yeah, very nice uh, 3D renderings here, which at least for my mind, really, really is, uh, are helpful when we get these. Correct. The additional density is to house two related families. So this is much needed space. Okay. Um, members, any questions for Mr. Silva? Or is somebody ready for a motion? And we have absolutely nothing on file. Taylor. Yeah, very reasonable uh, proposal we have before us here, I believe. I'm satisfied it meets the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval of the conditions. Thank you. Seconder for that, Mr. Palmer. Thank you. All in favor, unanimous approval. Okay, Mr. Silby, have your approval. Thank you, and Mr. Chairman and committee. Uh, next application is item number 11, 3920 Bloor Street West, and this is to construct a new rear yard carport with uh, two variances. And um, yeah, uh, we have... Um, Sorry, excuse planning. me to interrupt, Mr. Chair. Uh, we don't have yes. um, the agent on the uh on our on our attendees list um, just right now. So if we can move to the next one, we'll try to get a hold of them. Okay, we can stand that one down. Uh, item number 12 then is 43 Greendale Avenue. And on this application, we have a revised highlight yellow sheet showing revisions. Uh, there are nine variances on this application. And it looks like one of them has been revised, two of them have been revised. Uh, we have the revised agenda, the revised notice and plans, and uh, conditions from the applicant. We have planning, recommending a condition of approval, an event uh, of approval, and we have four uh, letters of support. Uh, we also have, oh yeah, there is, appears to be a previous decision on this application uh, where the property was severed. Uh, but basically we're looking at a, a planning report is looking at uh, it says to ap approve the application, but to refuse variance two being the rear yard landscape variance, which seeks to go from 50% permitted to 9%. And uh, so let's hear from uh, the speaker on this application is George Shama, of Great Room Inc. And he will be appearing on video. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman, committee members, George Shanma from Great Room Inc., the authorized agent representing the owner on this application. Mr. Shanma, okay, if you'd like to be on screen, you'll have to turn your video on. Mr. Shanma? Yes. You have to turn your video on. We can hear you, but we can't see you. It should be about, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. So uh, I just wanted to mention for this application, um, we do have uh, planning support um, for the variances that we've requested. Um, you did mention there something that was not in the report that was caught me off guard just now. Uh, the three variances that we did make significant improvements to um after the initial application 
um, were items regarding the uh, maximum height of the main wall. We reduced that down to the 9.98 meters. Um, the lot coverage for the uh, accessory garage structure, we reduced that down to the 11.8%. And we increased the rear yard soft landscape area to 36.2%. Okay. from the original application that was at 21 percent um so and i do know like we worked diligently with planning staff on this application in order to uh attain their support and approval for this uh and i believe we have satisfied them for uh all the variances that we've requested here um if there are any questions from the committee i'd be happy to answer them yeah, Mr. Sham, I must apologize. We, I read out the information from the previous application, which we just weren't able to reach the applicant. So, in fact, yes, there were two. Uh, you have revised plans and you've uh, reduced your variances, and uh, you have a cover letter which showing your revisions of the FSI. And uh, there, in this case, there is a planning uh, condition uh, on this application to just construct as illustrated, not, not to refuse any variances. So I apologize. That's fine. No problem. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, I have a question actually. I have any questions for you? Sure. Go ahead. I actually have a question. So I'm looking at this on uh, Google Maps right at the moment. And I think there was some reference in the application about an existing condition with respect to the driveway. And that's why there was so much hardscaping involved. But when I'm looking at the driveway right now, I, I really can't fathom that you will put up a new building and not redo the driveway because it's in rough shape. There are many, many cracks in the driveway. Uh, it looks like it's been cut once before, so those, it's been replaced. To me, in my mind, it seems like you will need to, if you're building a new building, either for resale value or whether it's to live in yourself that you would want to uh, do the driveway again as well. So I, I have a question, would it be, uh, and this is probably a question of staff, would it be acceptable to require as a condition use of permeable pavers since it is such a long driveway and you are putting the carport in the rear yard? Just a question of staff, whether that's well. I mean, I it says you, you you intend to keep the existing driveway, which I find hard to believe if you're putting up a new structure. Isn't there a condition on this? That's specifically what community planning is asking for? Or am I Permeable pavers? I don't think so. There's a memo, June. we're on 43 Greendale. Yeah, we are. So I have a memo, planning memo in our bookmark. It says planning that June 21st, should the committee choose to approve, post the following condition, construct as illustrated, as it relates to the use of permeable pavers in the rear yard of the subject site. Okay. Through you, Mr. Chairman, if I could yeah. just speak again. Yeah. Um, there was never any discussion actually regarding the driveway and there actually, um, I didn't see any conditions or planning staff. There, there was really no discussion with planning staff regarding the driveway. Um, it is a shared driveway with the neighbor. So there may need to be a discussion uh, based on the driveway. I would assume that, um, you know, something would be done to the driveway to improve it as, you know, whether it be redone or, um, you know, uh, redone with asphalt. And then, you know, we'd have to have that discussion with the neighbor, of course, to do that at the same time just based on us redeveloping the property. But again, there was no discussion about the driveway at all through this application. So was that any additional materials? No, it's in the planning condition, but the way I'm reading that is um, permeal pavers in the rear yard portion. So that would not be part of the shared driveway. That's correct. I guess it's hard to impose a condition on something that's shared with a neighbor. I see that now. Okay. Um, but permeable pavers are to be used in the rear yard. Is that not? That's the problem that's, is that the site plan that they're referencing shows very clearly new asphalt driveway. 
the permeable pavers are not part of the driveway leading to the garage. It's more of a patio area behind the house. Through you, Mr. Chairman, that is correct. So, Mr. Sham, are you are you okay with the uh, condition? I'm not clear that community planning is seeking to impose in their June 21st memo. Well, I don't yes. think it would work. If you show the revised plans, the site plan, mm -hmm. it doesn't show uh, permeable pavers for a driveway. Through you, Mr. Chairman, the the uh, uh, very yard the committee the can community planning condition requesting permeable pavers in the rear yard. We're not talking about the driveway. We're talking about so the, it's it's the a day. patio. Okay, so that 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 clarifies it for me. Okay, thank you. So that is that is a condition though for the patio. Yeah, he said he's okay with that condition. Okay. The applicant is not opposed to that condition, but it does not include the driveway, which for probably good good reason is because it's. Not Share all. a driveway. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions, uh, or would someone like to weigh in uh, with a motion uh, with some commentary? I'm uh, prepared to uh, move a motion if there's no more questions. Um, variances required are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the planning act. So I'll move approval subject to the. Planning conditions and subject to forestry condition number three. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Good seconder for that, Ms. Alderson. Happy to second that, yeah. Thanks. All in favor? Okay, unanimous approval. Thank you, uh, Mr. Silva. Thank you. Oh, Stama. Stama. Chama. Okay, uh, we can move on to our next application then which is item number, unless we found the applicant for item number 11. Uh, Mr. Chair, we've okay. sent out a, an, an email. We're still waiting. So we'll let you know when uh, okay. they join the meeting. Thank you. Okay. So we can move on to item number 13, which is to Ludgate Drive. Uh, we have a revised yellow highlighted sheet for the notice zone changes. It's for a second story addition above the existing dwelling, two story north side addition, a new front porch and a rear deck. There were four variances. There still are one of which has been revised. The FSI has been reduced. And um, we have a cover letter uh, regarding revisions in order to comply from October 5th, 2010, which would be interesting to hear about uh, whether it was going to be complied. And this support position petition with eight signatures, Urban Forestry looking for condition two. And we have one speaker on this the uh, Mohammed Afzal, who is the uh, agent for the applicant. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and the committee members. I, I am really happy uh, to be here to represent this tool at Gate Drive Utobico. We started the process with uh, applying for the zoning review to the city. Then we got the zoning review and we applied to the committee for adjustment for uh, a few minor variances. Mostly the variances are due to the existing condition. For example, the first variance is about uh, the length of the building. It is uh, required is 17 meter, but we have 18.5 meter because the existing Bangalore has this much length. Similarly, uh, the next variance is about the uh, FSI. Uh, it is allowed 45% or 0.45, but now we are requesting 0.494. Originally, it was 0.51, but uh, uh, discussion based on our discussion with the community planners, we reduced it to 0.494 and now it is uh, 288.04 square meter. Only less than less than 5% increase in the allowed FSI is requested in this uh, application. The last variance is about uh, the 
where you are set back, it is required 9.2 meter, uh, 25% of the lot depth. But we are proposing a rear yard setback of 8.8 .8 meter, and this is also due to pre existing condition. And uh, the, the last variance is about the height of eaves overhang from the ground, and it is slightly above the uh, above the value, uh, allowed value of 6.5 meter. And uh, the the, the plan has been uh, designed based on owner's desire to have a comfortable uh, living for his family and for some intended use of his own appearance. And uh, yes, this is. And also, uh, the scope of work uh, is actually, it is uh, the lowering of the basement and a new second floor addition, front, floor, uh, front porch, wooden deck, new balcony at external exterior side and the inside, and new below, below grade entrance. I request uh, the chairman and the committee member to please grant us, uh, grant these uh, variances. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, and you're okay with urban forestry is looking to impose condition number two. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, so there was an order to comply uh, 12 years ago. That was something about a deck. I don't know if that was dealt with, but that gave us a copy of this. Uh, uh, that, that deck is gone. No, we have a small deck at the uh, north, northwest okay. corner. I guess they removed it uh, because it was an uh, 18 by 20 foot deck. So that uh, is not. That 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 would be removed. That is still there, but it would be removed because in the new proposal, we are providing a new, new small deck at the corner, uh, north northwest corner of the house. Okay, uh, okay, members, any questions uh, for the agent, or is someone ready to bring a motion? Mr. Kumar. Yeah, I find the uh, revised application to be uh, minor in nature, meeting the four tests. I would therefore like to move approval subject to forestry condition number two. Okay, thank you, sir. Seconder for that motion. Mr. Taylor, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval, sir. Thank you very much. Have a, have a wonderful day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, excuse the interruption, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we do have the agent on for item number 11, Eve Adams. So if we'd like to go back to uh, that item. Thank you. Okay, we'll do so. It's an application to um, 3920 Bloor Street West to construct a new rear yard cart port. And uh, the speaker is Eve Adams. We have on this application um, planning would like a variance. I'm just refer to it on, incorrectly on item 12. Planning would like a variance to the rear yard landscape variance were refused, or about 50% is required, 9% or 14.83 meters is being provided. And we have a copy of a severance from back in August 2008. 14 where this lot was created. So um, we'll hear from uh, the uh, agent or the owner of the property, Eve Adams. And there are two guys. Oh, hi there. Hello. Hello. And appearing by, yes, you're appearing by video. So I see the I name. Am. Okay. I can't, I'm, but we can't unmute. Hi there, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I see the name John Shank showing up, but there's no video. Yes. You have to press the video button at the bottom to say start video. That's what we have to do anyway. It's there. not allowing it to. Okay. Okay. There we are. Hi there, Mr. Chairman. Eve Adams for J. Rats Holdings. 
Yes, uh, so this is an existing driveway. It's a bit of a unique situation in that it's a corner lot at Martin Grove and Bloor Street. So there's no driveway at the front. It's fully soft landscaping across the front. Uh, and if planning staff could bring up the pictures that we provided, you'll see that it's fully grassed at the front. The rear yard is actually a shared driveway with the neighbor. You'll see there to the north. And this is an existing driveway. So the asphalt that's there is already existing and that's how it was purchased. This entire request turns simply on adding a carport at the back. And so I see that variance one is approved because it's so close, but the second request, it, it just is the nature of the law. This is how the law was purchased uh, with that asphalt, which is in very good shape. Okay, so there are, there are they want, they are willing to agree to the one percent increase in lot coverage, but they're saying the land is there some opportunity to increase uh, the landscape um, at the rear? Like they they look at their memo. Uh, it, you know, can you improve upon that, or is that something that can't be can't be done? We could we could go up to about eighteen percent, um, but it's very difficult any other way. And that would mean taking out the existing asphalt. But we're hoping that you would you could see yourselves towards 18%. Okay. Um, there's any questions for uh, for the applicant? Uh, any questions, or is someone raised, Mr. Morick? I'm assuming that the. I mean, there's a garage, so that's one parking spot. So you're seeking a second covered parking spot in an area that I'm assuming is currently being used as parking anyway. This is it exactly. This is really for rain and snow shelter. But I understand planning's concern too. I mean, you basically have 100% asphalt in your backyard. Which is how it's and that's how the property was purchased. If I could request committee staff to bring up some of the photos just to demonstrate that I sent in yesterday, that this is very much in keeping with the neighborhood and we're providing far more grass uh, than most neighbors. And there are quite a few examples of that. The deadline to submit staff. anything was last week. So if we, you sent it yesterday, then we don't have it for the committee members today. Okay, within uh, so five neighbors on either side, folks have fully asphalted their entire front yard, even the city's boulevard. So we're not at all like that. We're fully grassed on the entire front. This is just a unique situation in that the driveway really is the backyard. So while I appreciate that, you know, the backyard calculation is 50%, it is also the driveway. So it's just, it's just the nature of it and it's already existing and has been for quite some time. Just looking to add a carport. I'm just having a quick look at Zoom and I'm not seeing other properties that have fully asphalted their front. Um, I can provide for you. We sent this over. So 3928 Moore Street West. We are 3920. Looks, I'm not sure if you can see that. Apologize, there's that. And then I'll show you also 3933 Bloor Street West. And again, we're 3920, and that's fully asphalt. This is immediately across the street, and it's asphalt driveway, and then permeable pavers taking up the entire front yard. That's literally across the street, whereas we're fully grass on the front. I'm not sure you can. Not seeing that. Are you able to see that one? So that's immediately across the street. Well, immediately across the street. He's sharing any materials as per the instructions. So we're going to have to remove you down. Okay. The and then I'll show you the full asphalt. Now, uh, can we is, remove her yeah. as an, to an attendee? She's not supposed to be sharing any materials. Thank you. I 
I thought. Sorry, my Hello? bad. It's okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought I was responding to a question. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Video. Yeah, I guess we're new at this, so I guess the procedure is that <laughs> the uh, video stream is not supposed to use uh, file sharing or whatever else, but whether you could hold up something, I don't know, like they can, uh, <laughs> the you know, city legal. We have no way of Twitter. getting that as part of the contents for our file. Yeah, they can't be saved as part of the minutes or whatever else. So, okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, on this, I guess the issue is the soft landscaping. The applicant did say they could increase it to 18% from 9%. Um, and that's what's before us at this point. So any other questions or some ready for a motion? And I take it that the applicant had uh, finished her presentation. Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yeah, Mr. Chair, just a question of the, the agent. Um, is the carport being built almost entirely on existing asphalt? Yes, exclusively on the asphalt. So the and, and there's, a, there's a little bit, I'm not sure the direction, I guess it's north, uh, an extra three feet or something. It, it's actually going to be fully on the asphalt. so. Not okay, at all. So we're, not just, we're just putting a roof on top of asphalt. Exactly. That's it exactly, okay. Mr. Taylor. Okay, if there are no other questions, I'm prepared to make a motion. Uh, I find the variances to be minor in nature. They reflect an existing uh, situation. Uh, impact wise, we're talking about putting a roof on asphalt. Uh, the rear yard issue really became Germain or brought to the forefront, I think, by the consent uh, 11 or 12 years ago, where uh, yards on this particular property became uh, significantly impacted. Uh, but, you know, we're dealing with an existing situation. And I move approval subject to. Oh, no conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. We have a second for Mr. Taylor's motion. Mr. Palmer. Uh, anything to add to that? Nope. Okay, all in favor? Unanimous approval. You have your approval, Ms. Thank Adams. The committee. Happy Canada Day. Same to you. Okay, our next, we can move over to item number 14, 14 Embers Drive. It's to construct a partial second story addition and a rear yard deck. We have uh, four variances and Arborist Report Planning is requesting a condition of approval to construct as illustrated in the architectural plans as it relates to the existing basement level, established grade and FSI. And uh, other than that, that's all we have. Speaker on this application, computer closed. Speaker is Rick Bongers. And does not say whether he's going to appear on video or not. So I assume that means no. Mr. Bongers, welcome back. Oh, um, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Okay. A pretty straightforward application. I, uh, is there anything you'd like to uh, think we need a, well, maybe we do need a presentation. Would let someone like a presentation on this application? No? Uh, okay. Yeah, I can speak on the. I can speak on the variances if you like. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary. Is there anything you'd like to bring to the committee's attention? Though, uh, before uh, I yeah, I just, it, the, the, floor, the uh, floor space index is a result of the um, existing conditions of the home, whereas the basement slab is actually closer to grade than the ground floor. So the basement is included in this application in the floor space index. Um, okay. If it it typically isn't, and if it wasn't, we'd be closer to 40%. But um, as I mentioned, because the basement's closer to grade than the ground floor, uh, this application uh, has the floor space index, including the basement. Okay, and I take it then you're, you or your client are not opposed to the condition being requested by community planning to have it constructed as illustrated specifically with respect to the basement level. 
and the established grade and the FSI for that very reason. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Members, any questions for Mr. Bongers? If not, was someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Mr. Kamarik? Sorry, I need to unmute myself. Um, yeah, I, I find the application to be minor and uh, meeting the four tests. I agree with the uh, planning um, view and for that reason would like to impose the planning condition. Um, I won't repeat it. I think everyone knows what it, what it is and uh, no other conditions. I'd like to move approval. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kamarik. Seconded for that motion. Mr. Taylor, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Bongers. And, Thank you. Okay. We can move on to item number 15, then 76 Hay Avenue. This is an application to construct a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. We have a revised notice of agenda highlighted showing changes made pursuant to a waiver. Uh, one, there were three variances. The uh, one has been reduced, eliminated. The other two have been reduced, being the length and depth. Uh, we have before us a uh, transportation is in support. We have a petition in support. Uh, Urban forestry looking for condition number three. Uh, planning has um, provided us with a memo and their believe that notwithstanding it sometimes we don't know if it's before or after the changes uh when you read the memo they're still not satisfied with the changes made to the length and the depth and um that was a little unclear i had to read it twice to feel i figured that out so we have in terms of the speaker on this application we have david eagleman back uh, he's the applicant uh agent for the uh for the owners and as well we have a neighbor from 38 to mendota road excuse so me mis mr chair road. sorry uh the uh area the speaker lenny ritchie is the owner so david engelman will be the only speaker on this file oh i see okay i saw another address but that is the uh the owner then reach i see that okay thank Correct. you so we only have the one speaker on this application like i said we have a the petition and support. We have uh, community planning's uh, memo, which I guess uh, you should address. Good, good afternoon now, uh, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, David Eagleman, uh, the applicant on behalf of the owner. And uh, this is the last time I'll be speaking to you this morning. Um, and, and through you, Mr. Chair, I, I would like to provide a, a presentation given the report from planning staff. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I, I'm sure you're aware, but my name is David Eagleman, planner from Design Plan Services uh, here on behalf of the owner. And uh, before getting into the variances, I would like to note that we have consulted with community planning staff regarding the application and have made revisions to the proposal and requested variances in an attempt to satisfy their concerns. However, as indicated within their staff report dated June 15th, the revisions have not been to their satisfaction. Um, additionally, I have reviewed the memorandum from Urban Forestry regarding the application and find the recommended conditions to be acceptable. Uh, I have also reviewed the memorandum from transportation staff dated June 23rd uh, in which they express no concerns or objections. However, this memorandum is no longer applicable considering uh, the driveway width variance has been eliminated. Uh, lastly, I would note that surrounding neighbors have been consulted regarding this application and, and both immediately adjacent neighbors have provided signatures in support of the proposal as indicated on the submitted uh, support letter. Um, the proposal is only seeking two variances here for length and depth and is compliant with all other zoning bylaw provisions. Uh, the proposed length, length and depth are measured the same uh, because the front main wall of the, build, of the dwelling is located at the front yard setback. Uh, as such, I will speak to both variances together. Um, 
variance number one and number two, the proposed building length and depth has been reduced. And uh, both the length and depth is measured from the front main wall to a portion of the proposed basement in the rear yard, which will be almost entirely located below grade. Uh, the, the portion of the basement, which is included in the length and depth, constitutes approximately 3.35 meters of the two variances. As such, excluding the below grade portion of the length and depth, the proposed building length and depth is actually 22.18 meters. Uh, the proposal is for a one story bungalow and as a result, the proposed length, length and depth of 22.18 meters will have much less of an impact as compared to a proposal for a two story dwelling. Uh, at this time, I would like to bring the, the committee's attention to the submitted neighborhood photos. Uh, so if I could just please ask staff to bring those up. Um, They're on the way, continue. Okay, perhaps I'll, I'll continue, yeah. So uh, when they are brought up, you will see that in photo number two, um, that shows the existing dwelling at 70 Hay Avenue uh, from the rear yard of the subject property. And you'll see uh, that the rear main wall of 70 Hay Avenue uh, extends quite deep into the rear yard. Um, photo number three shows the uh, Photo number three shows the existing dwelling at 70 Hay Avenue from the front of the property, uh, which again shows that this dwelling, which is also a bungalow, has a fairly uh, large building depth uh, and length, which appears to be greater than what is being proposed through this application. Uh, similarly, photo number four shows the existing dwelling at 68 Hay Avenue, which is again also a bungalow and also has a fairly large building length and depth, which also appears to be greater than what is being proposed through this application. Uh, the rest of the submitted neighborhood photos show other dwellings within the neighborhood, which appear to have a similar building length and depth, typically with more than one story. As such, uh, as I've previously mentioned, the proposal is compliant with, with most zoning bylaw provisions, as we are only seeking two variances through this application. And specifically, in regards to the rear yard setback, the proposal will provide a rear yard setback of 18.58 meters, which is 6.68 meters greater than the minimum required rear yard setback. Uh, moreover, the proposal is compliant with all setback requirements, landscaping requirements, uh, and building height, which demonstrates that the proposal is in keeping with the existing character of the neighborhood and will have little to no impact further than what the bylaw already contemplates. Um, there have also been other approvals for building length and depth within the neighborhood, including 150 Hay at 23.27 meters in length and a depth of 23.33 meters, um, and, and two others, which I won't mention because my time is up, but, uh, I, I am of the opinion that this proposal uh, fits with both the existing and planned context and meets the four tests under section 45 one of the planning act. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eagleman. Actually, uh, thank you for sticking to your time, but I'd like to get an answer to those because obviously, what you're trying to justify is a greater length and eight meter depth variance, but trading it off of the fact that it's one story and not two story, which probably uh, looks like there's no neighbors here objecting. So it looks like that's what the neighbors would, you're saying the neighbors would actually prefer that. So the other ones that went beyond, were they one or two stories? Um, so, uh, 150 Hay is a, um, I'm just pulling it up here. 150 Hay, I believe is a, a two story dwelling. Um, Yes, so 150 A is a two-story dwelling. The other approval, and, and I will note too that there are some dwellings like, for example, the um, the two bungalows in close, in very close proximity to the subject property at 70 and 68 A, which appear to have uh, uh, a larger building length and depth than what is being proposed, do not show up in the uh, decision package perhaps because they were 
constructed as of right at one time or, or one way or another, they are, are not within the research package that I have obtained. Um, okay. and so the, the other decision uh, I have is for 32 Herald Street. Uh, that is a, uh, a bungalow as far as I understand at this point. Um, and that was uh, approved at a building length of 23.59 meters and a depth of 23.35. Mm -hmm. um, there is uh, another at 382 Melrose Street, which I'm also uh, just pulling that up now, but that was approved at a length of 20.78 and a depth of 20.91. And that is a, a two-story dwelling. Okay, so I'm going to want to turn it over to the other members, but before that, I just have a question for you. Uh, you're obviously coming forward and, you know, with you know, having a one-story dwelling for certain mobility issues, so you're getting additional length and depth requested and trade-offs. So would you agree that it would perhaps be, and I know you don't have a GFA or coverage of GFA, more particularly FSI, variance would, as a condition that you not in, in exchange that this was uh, to be granted, that you would agree that they wouldn't have a, there wouldn't be a second story, uh, or could that be imposed? If they could fit with, you know, because the neighbors are happy, everyone, you're saying, please give me this quite extraordinary relief and great relief for left and debt, but I'm not going up. I'm only doing a one story. So to keep them to that word, I'm just opening that up to uh, whether that's reasonable or should be done. To the other members and to you, Mr. Raymond. Through you, Mr. Chair, if if I just correct me if I uh, am wrong, but I believe you're saying that uh, should the committee approve the application, they will uh, apply a condition that states that the proposal either be substantially uh, in accordance with the plans or that there be no more than one story. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, something like that to keep them. Uh... Because I see they do have room, perhaps, within their FS their FSI, but that's sort of clearly what they want to do. So, whether that could be imposed, it seemed like a, a good. It, otherwise, they could perhaps build something as of right. They obviously, have to come back for anything that triggers more variances. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I think that condition is perfectly reasonable. Okay. Anyway, so. Uh, I'll move. I'll open it up to the other members to ask whatever questions they would they wish, um, or to weigh in with a motion. Perhaps it might be tidier to tie it to the plans or the elevations versus restricting the number of stories, since the bylaw does permit. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if the members are in favor. Maybe they'll agree with community plan to refuse the application, but. Um, Let's hear what other people have to have to say about that. Mr. Chair. Mr. Yeah. I just just wanted to clarify. I believe what is being asked for is a length um, of 25.49, because I thought I heard Mr. Engelman refer to 22, but maybe that was an error. I misheard that. Uh, so through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to answer Member Kumarg's question, um, I, I noticed that as per the the revised public public notice, uh, there is a small discrepancy between the length and the depth. However, uh, the from what I understand, the revised waiver that was submitted to the committee dated uh, June third, twenty twenty two, the length and depth variances are for the same number at twenty five point five three meters. 0.53, not 0.49. Mr. Chair and members, the revised zoning waiver is on the screen right now for your review. And that is, is that consistent with the notice that went out? Mr. Chair, you, technically Mr. speaking, no, because this came in after the public notice went out. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, yep. I will note that it should be uh, the the variances on the public notice that would have gone out, I believe, would have been greater than what we've reduced to. Okay. Um, 
and and through you, Mr. Chair, I, I know the the architect on this file was uh, submitting the the plans and waiver to the uh, to the committee. So if that uh, zoning waiver that was uh, shown on the screen previously is the latest, then uh, those are the correct variances. Okay. Okay, members, any questions uh, for Mr. Eagleman or uh, someone ready for a motion? Uh, just a question related to the revised plans. Do we have the revised plans on file? Um, and if so, what's the date of any revised um, site plans that we have? That, that if we decide to approve and we want to tie it to a certain set of plans, we have um, the correct either submission date or um, or date on the plans. They are there. They're just kind of hidden. So right after the revision page with the variances, they do follow that right before the, the waiver form. And the date is June 20th. Mr. Chair and members, I'll have the, they are on the screen now for your review. And through you, Mr. Chair, I can confirm that those are the, the correct revised plans. Thank you. I can't see everyone's uh, someone ready to weigh in with the motion. I can't see. I don't have a visual. There we go. Uh, I'm prepared to move a motion. Yep. Um, I think given the unique characteristics of the lot here where it's uh, quite narrow but quite deep um, and there's no other variances being requested other than the length and depth, the driveway width variance was removed. I think uh, uncomfortable uh, that the variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the Planning Act. So um, I'm comfortable moving approval subject to um, forestry condition number three. And if we tie it to the revised plans, I believe they're dated June 20th. To construct as illustrated with respect yeah. to the elevations, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's tie it to the elevations. Okay, thank we you. can add as it relates to the height and number of stories. Is that what your goal is? Yeah, as it relates to the height and number of stories. Yes. Excellent. Second for that motion, Mr. Mark. I'll second that and uh, take comfort that both neighbors are in support. So both immediate neighbors. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Eagleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Have a fantastic long weekend. Okay, you too. Be safe. Um, we have two more applications, uh, 16 and 17, before we break for uh, lunch, as 18 and 19 have both been deferred. So item number 16, 116 Regent Street, that's the application we heard at the outset with respect to the refund for the last application. It is to construct a new a two-story front addition, a two-story rear addition with a rooftop deck, and a second and third story addition above the existing dwelling. There are five variances. We have, uh, it says revised notice in our bookmark, but I don't see any changes or highlighting. Uh, perhaps- It was it mailed out, uh, so that's- Okay, thank you. We have uh, Mr. Eagleman, uh, Mr. Eagleman again, but we've been provided with neighborhood photos. Um, a previous decision from March 4th, 24 2022 that was refused on a 3-2 split that we heard about earlier this morning and urban forestry is looking for condition number one. And the speaker, uh, my computer just closed, so perhaps someone can tell me who the speaker is. There we go. Juan Martinez. Uh, Juan Martinez. Oh, right. We heard from Mr. Pereira, the, the client this morning, so now we're hearing from the agent. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. My name is Juan Martinez. Yes. Who's speaking? Is that Juan Martinez? 
Yes, sir. My name is Juan Martinez, planner at Design Plan Services. Okay, welcome. Okay, so we uh, we heard a, a little about this application from your client this morning in conjunction with his uh, his other application that was uh, refused because there was some error involved. So this is the correct application showing various areas that permitted height of 8.5 meters. Is there, um, would you like to walk through anything or would you like to just bring anything to the committee's attention or see if uh, they have any questions? Through you, sir, Chair. Um... The application, it's correct as today, and not only was the height corrected, but some of the variances were uh, improved and some of them were eliminated based on discussions with planning staff. Um, and I can walk through the variances in front of you today if you would like me to. Okay, I don't think that's necessary, members. If the members would like. Let's see if the members have any questions for you, if someone's ready for a motion. Hey, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Uh, could I get confirmation that variance number seven is accurate? I only see five variances. I, oh, yeah, five variances. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong application. Yeah. Uh, number 16. That is correct. Yes, there's only five variances. I withdraw my question. Okay. I'll ask the next applicant that question. Okay. Is anyone uh, ready to make a motion on this application? Um, not ready for a motion, but I do have a question. The the side yard variance for 0 0.3, um, that reflects an existing condition, but then it looks like you're building an addition at the 0.3 as well. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, to you, Mr. Chair, correct. Yes, the addition of point three goes to the front and to the rear. And you, you wouldn't want to move that into a more appropriate setback? Uh, through you, Sir Chair, uh, to answer to your uh, comment, uh, Member Palmer, uh, we believe that the point three, in addition to point seven eight uh, sire setback, uh, it's adequate for to provide uh, access and uh, and separation between the dwellings, as well as the, the property on the other side is at uh, 0 0.03 uh, as well, so it matches that character. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions or is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Taylor, sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm satisfied the uh, new application meets the four tests. And I move approval subject to urban forestry condition one. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconder for that. Ms. Alderson, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Mr. Palmer, you're good with it? No. Mr. No, no you're I'm opposed. Okay. So I noticed your hand didn't go up. Okay, so the motion carries four to one. Uh, the application is approved and we can move on to our last application before lunch break, item number 17, 443 Evans Avenue. This is to construct a one-story rear addition, a second-story addition above uh, to the entire, sorry, a second-story addition to the entirety of the adultery dwelling and a new attached garage. Please note that more than 50% of the existing dwelling walls will be kept. There are six variances. A planning is requesting condition of approval in the event of uh, approval of the application to be constructed substantially in accordance with the site plan and the elevation drawings as it relates to the proposed um, building length, depth, and uh, west side setback. They use the old condition with substantially in accordance as opposed to construct as illustrated, but uh, that's all I'd point out. Uh, and the applicant uh, for this application is... Uh, uh, Kunal Patel. Yes. Uh, of... Welcome, sir. Yeah, this is Kunal Patel. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the committee member. I am uh, speaking with regard to the variance outline for uh, 443 Evans Avenue. This proposed dwelling is a second story addition to an existing property 
property and also for a new attached garage. Please note that uh, more than 70% of the existing dwelling wall will be kept as they are currently. The first yeah. variance is... Yes, sir. I don't think we need you to walk through all the variances. Okay. Um, we see, are you okay as community planning has advised that they're okay with the application? They want to impose a condition. I assume you're okay with that condition that be built in accordance with the uh, with the drawing, the elevation drawings. As I said at the outset, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so uh, they're, they're asking that that be imposed, but they've written a report that uh, they uh, they're okay with. They don't have any concerns with the application. No. So, see, let's see if the committee members have any questions for you, or if they're uh, prepared to uh, make a motion. Members, any questions for Mr. Patel? If no one has any questions, I'm prepared to make a motion. Uh, I believe this application meets the four tests. Uh, it's desirable for the development of the property. And I move for approval subject to the condition uh, that community planning has put forward that it be tied site that the be tied to the elevation and site plans dated, I believe it's May 18th, yeah. 2022. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. Seconder for that. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. All in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval, Mr. Patel. Uh, good luck with your uh, your build. And uh, we stand adjourned now till uh, for lunch. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, what time would you like to return for either sound check or sound check at uh, 145 and start at two or- Sure, or that, that works. That works for you? Okay, so the sound check will start staff at 145 and we will resume at 2 p.m. and uh, have a uh, great break, everyone.
Okay.